أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله مجريه ومرساه إن ربي لغفور رحيم بسم الله وبالله ومن الله وعلى الله وفي الله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ربنا أدخلنا مدخل صدق وأخرجنا مخرج صدق واجعل لنا من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا جاء الحق وزهق الباطل إن الباطل كان زهوقا ربنا اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مباركا مرحوما واجعل اللهم تفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل لما فينا ولا معنا ولا منا شقيا ولا محروما يا رب هيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا واجعل معونتك الحسنى لنا مددا بالأولياء بالصالحين بجمعهم من جاءنا القرآن عنهم مرشدا فرج بفضلك إلهي كربنا يا خير مد الأنام له يدا وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أمين وعليكم السلام ورسامي السلام عليكم إبرابودي عيد مبارك to all of you إن شاء الله may Allah make it a blessed time for all of us and may Allah make it easy for those who are passing through difficult times especially in war zones and those who are in areas whereby there are difficulties generally to do with living. May Allah make it easy for all of them and make it easy for us as well. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to come together today in this third day of Eid al-Adha uh, to celebrate, inshallah, uh, a very important celebration. Uh, it was Eid al-Adha, but uh, it is also important to realize it's not finished yet. Four days for Eid al-Adha. The Hujjaj tomorrow, they will finish and they will return to Mecca to complete the rituals. And those who will go to Medina, they will go. And those who will not go to Medina, they will come back, inshallah, in peace. So today our topic, inshallah, is Tawbah. It's a very beautiful word. Uh, I, I, I made an agreement with Sakina at the beginning when we thought we will do Salam Sunday, we will talk about one word only. So this word we chose today is Tawbah, which literally meaning repentance. Okay, repentance, Tawbah. Uh, it is four letters. Ta, Wow, Ba, and Ta at the end. Okay, four letters. And subhanAllah, as I always do, I like to link letters to the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because to me, everything is initiated by him and everything will return once more to him. It is him who is important. Everything else is not important. The relationship between the created and the creator is like the body and the shadow. The shadow will take shape when there is light reflecting on the body. And that shadow could be shorter or longer depending okay, upon the distance between the source of light and the body and the timing. The same thing. Everything that is created to those who know is like a shadow. But the creator is the source. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Almighty. So this is why I return to the names. Allah said in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولله الأسماء الحسنى فادعوه بها For Allah are the most beautiful names. Do call him by those names. Call Allah by the names. It's really amazing to learn the names of Allah. And Rasulullah says in the hadith, لله تسعا وتسعين اسما من أحصاها دخل الجنة For Allah there are 99 names whosoever manages to memorize them and act upon those names which he can act upon to perfect his character, 
and call upon Allah using alaykum as using those names, definitely, for sure, alaykum as wa rahmatullah, alaykum as Allah will allow this person to enter paradise. Very important. Okay? So this is where my linking of letters to the name. So the letter ta, the beginning and at the end. The most important name beginning with ta is tawab. Tawab literally is the one who returns to his creation when they call upon him, who turns to his creation, who asks his creation to turn to him, and then he's there ready for them to accept them. Okay? To give them what they want and to forgive their sins or their shortcomings. Okay? Tawab. It is a beautiful name. Okay? And it is good for a person to call Allah by that name. When, when you feel anguish, when you feel fear, when you feel the earth is becoming so small, Okay, the place you are standing is no longer yours. Everything you try to do, you are unable. The will is not there. Rest assured, there is a barrier because the source is kept away from you. So the energy is not reaching, so you need to call upon him. Even if you are not going to him, he will come to you. Ya Tawab, or you who returns, or you who comes to his servant when he calls. Ya Tawab. Just keep it. It's a beautiful name. Okay? It's a very, very beautiful name to call Allah with. And the wow is from Wahid. And we know he is the only one that you can turn to seeking forgiveness. Nobody else. You can turn to the created when you wrong them to ask them to forgive you. But ultimately, it is him because he is the judge. Either he will accept or not accept. And we will talk about this Wajid, okay, the initiator, the one who initiates all that which is created, okay, the one initiates everything. Nothing is initiated without his permission. Allah said in the Quran, وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا عِنْدَنَا خَزَائِنُهُ وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا عِنْدَنَا خَزَائِنُهُ There is nothing that you can think of, you know or you don't know, only that it is with us. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم There is no power nor will only by him. So don't think you have anything in the matter. Yes, you can choose. You can strive to do. But without him, you will be unable to. The support is from him. And then واسع Ever encompassing. The ever encompassing. He encompasses everything. Allah said in the Quran واسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض the overall encompassing, just his chair, forget about his throne. If you put it to measure it physically, if it's not physical, but if you want to, it will encompass the heaven and the earth. And today we know through science that the world is increasing in space and we don't know how many years of light we can reach just the space between us and the heaven, the higher heavens. We don't know. This is a huge Yani, misunderstanding by us because we have no means of measuring. We can do as much as we can, but we really can't. There is a lot for us to learn to understand the world that we live in. Although all that which we can see with our eyes, it is up to us to investigate it, to interrogate, to find out, to research. That is our duty. It's a sign of wanting to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his chair encompasses the heaven and the earth and the relationship between the chair and the throne is like a ring thrown in a desert. If you just take the North African desert, take a ring, a small little ring, throw it in it, what is the percentage of that ring to the area of the desert? If you fly as far as possible to look down, it's nothing compared to the desert. So that's the chair in comparison to the throne is nothing. Therefore, Allah cannot be measured by any means of measurement, okay? Space, direction, time, or place. No way. This is not the way to do it. So he is ever encompassing everything. And the letter, Ba, one name, Al-Barr. And Allah always uses Barr and Rahim together. He joined them. Rahim meaning merciful. Barr is the one who gives you 
whether you want or not, he gives you. Because like a parent to a child, it is their duty to give. Anything that the child requires, it is the duty of the parents to give. In some countries, there are laws. Okay, from certain age to certain age, you must look after the child. In this country, it's 16 years old. Any child who's younger than 16 is considered to be the responsibility of the parents. If they are short in their looking after of the child, then they're in trouble. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Haven't seen you. How are you? Are you all right? Okay, that is something very important to think about. So, and the last letter is ta as well, which is tawab. As if to say, tawba can only be gained from the one who is always turning to you because he created you and he provides for you, wanting you to come to him. And there is no one else but him because he's the only one who initiated. وَإِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهٌ واحد. And your Lord is the only one Lord. The translation sometimes is miserable to me because when we say لا إله إلا الله spiritually it means there is none worthy to be worshipped but Allah. But people say there is no God but God. There are no gods. You should never think there are gods. If you think there are gods you are mistaken. There is only one God. So that there is no God but God. I don't know what does it mean. It doesn't mean like that in Arabic. When I was taught this in Arabic Arabic needs to be explained to those who speak Arabic. My mother tongue is Arabic. When the teachers who taught me explained to me, they didn't say to me, okay, there is no God but God. But they told me, or they taught me, there is none worthy to be worshipped. Okay, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لا معبود بحق إلا الله. This is what they said to me. لا معبود بحق إلا الله. Okay, that is the whole thing. So, he is the one you turn to, and he will encompass everything because Okay? He is aware of everything because he created everything. Come in. Alright? Pull out. Thank you. Okay. Now, this is important. Alaikum salam. Welcome. Welcome. Alaikum salam wa rahmah. Welcome, my sisters. If you can come, there is a place in the front here. Those people in the front here, they are shy to come forward. <laughs> Your place is reserved. Alright. So, this is the name Okay, of Tawbah, alaykum salam welcome. Linking it to the names of Allah. Tawab, Wahid, Wajid, Wasi', Barun. Okay, these are the names. And all those names, as I said, they can be used to call upon Allah to make it easy for you. I give you just a little bit of a hint. When you feel you're confused and too many things coming to your mind and I cannot make a decision, say Ya Wahid. He will guide you. Yeah? Very beautiful name. When you are trying to be creative, when you are trying to think, especially those who write, those who want to speak, those who want to do anything, you want to decorate your house, you don't know how to, do, you're confused. You have the ability to do it because Allah has programmed you. Allah said, We have programmed into Him, the human being, the right and the wrong, the good and the bad, and everything is there. You have it. Okay? In your brain. However, you need to have that kind of initiation from Allah for you. So you say, Ya Wajid. Beautiful. You repeat it, and Allah will make it easy for you to find. If you lost something, and you want to find it, people panic. Oh, I lost my wallet, I lost my iPhone. But if it is an old crappy phone, nobody says anything. <laughs> ah, it doesn't matter. But my iPhone, Allah Akbar. People panic. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what you need to do is, straight away, say, Ya Wajid. When somebody said to me, something is lost, I don't panic. And not, nothing to do with me. If I didn't lose anything. If somebody just said that something is being lost, straight away I just, in, in myself, I begin to call him. And 99%, the person will find what he wants. Because somebody needs to turn to Allah. Allah says in the Quran, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى الله. Do, run, escape to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do rush to Allah, ask of Allah. And Allah will give you. Okay? This is absolutely important for you to think about. If life becomes so narrow and the past becomes so difficult to go on to and you are not able to choose the right choices, say ya wasa or you all encompassing. Please make it easy for me. Show me the ways. Because there are not one way, there are many ways for you to reach your destination. 
And if you want Allah to gift you, to give you, to be kind to you, say a bar. Okay? Just, just call the name. Make it something. And to me, in order for you to utilize those names generally, properly, every day you should read them. I was taught after every salah, when I make my dua, I call Allah by his names. So I read my hands and I say, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Malik, Ya Quddus, Ya Salam, Ya Mu'min, Ya Muhaymin, Ya Aziz, Ya Jabbar, Ya Mutakabbir, Ya Khaliq, Ya Bari, Ya Musawir, Ya Ghafar, Ya Qahar, Ya Wahab, Ya Razzaq, Ya Fattah, Ya Alim, Ya Qabid, Ya Khafid, Ya Basit, Ya Rafi, Ya Mu'iz, Ya Mudhil, Ya Sami'i, Ya Basir, Ya Hakam, Ya Adl, Ya Latif, Ya Khabir, Ya Halim, Ya Azim, Ya Ghafur, Ya Shakur, Ya Ali, Ya Kabir, Ya Hafid, Ya Muqit, Ya Hasib, Ya Jalil, Ya Karim, Ya Raqib, Ya Mujib, Ya Wasi, Ya Hakim, Ya Wadud, Ya Majid, Ya Ba'ith, Ya Shahid, Ya Haq, Ya Wakil, Ya Qawi, Ya Mateen, Ya Wali, Ya Hamid, Ya Muhsi, Ya Mubdi, Ya Mu'id, Ya Muhi, Ya Mu'it, Ya Hay, Ya Qayyum, Ya Wajid, Ya Majid, Ya Wahid, Ya Ahad, Ya Fard, Ya Samad, Ya Qadir, Ya Muqtadir, Ya Muqaddim, Ya Mu'akhir, Ya Awal, Ya Akhir, Ya Zahir, Ya Batun, Ya Muhit, Ya Jami, Ya Ba'ith, Ya Shahid, Ya Haq, Ya Wakil, Ya Qawi, Ya Mateen, Ya Wali, Ya Hamid, Ya Muhsi, Ya Mubdi, Ya Mu'id, Ya Muhi, Ya Mu'it, Ya Hay, Ya Qayyum, Ya Wajid, Ya Majid, Ya Ba'ith, Ya Shahid, Ya Haq, Ya Wakil, Ya Qawi, Ya Mateen, Ya Wali, Ya Hamid, Ya Hamid, Ya Hamid, Ya Hamid, Ya Muhsi, Ya Mubdi, Ya Mu'id, Ya Muhi, Ya Mu'it, يا مالك الملك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا مخصت يا جامع يا غني يا مغني يا مانع يا ضار يا نافع يا نور يا هادي يا بدئ يا باقي يا وارث يا رشيد يا صبور Now this is 99 names but there are more than 99 names In fact I have a collection at home over a thousand names Some of them from the hadith Some of them okay, in the Quran not mentioned in the 99 names the Prophet mentioned and so on But if you read them every day and you read them with their meaning okay, The old man Sheikh Umar who always come and sit with us in our circle he knows them by heart in English and in Arabic. And since I knew him and I was telling him about those names, he takes them very seriously. And if you notice, he's always re repeating them. And then, subhanAllah, because they are imprinted in your heart, and they are in your tongue easy to say, and they are running in your veins, in your blood vessels, when you want Allah by any name and you call him by that name, he's there for you. He said, Ad'uni astajib lakum. Call me, I will answer you. Call me, I will answer you. Wa alaikum salam welcome my sister. Call me, I will answer you. Just call him, ask of him, and he will be there for you. So these are the names linked to Tawbah. Tawbah in the Quran is mentioned in all four, only four surahs, four chapters of the Quran. In six places. Okay? In six verses. Four surahs, six verses. <laughs> now, three times, in Surah An-Nisa, once in Surah At-Tawbah, once in Surah Al-Shura, once in Surah Al-Tahrim. But being me, somebody who always very inquisitive, wanting to know, why those four surahs? After all my research, my questioning to people who told me to go away, don't ask this question, why are you asking such question? My own <laughs> way came to the conclusion that An-Nisa is the surah that has a lot of the laws of living. As human beings and relationship between males and females and law that govern life generally in living a tawbah is the surah in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us okay about those whom he will never forgive and therefore he began the surah by not naming himself as the most merciful every surah begin bismillah rahman rahim except surah tawbah why because those people whom, who anger him by denying him his existence and associating him with others, he said, no, I'm not going to. Enough is enough. I gave you a chances after chances. You are to stay away from me. And in that surah as, as well, there are beautiful things when you read them. Absolutely beautiful. The surah ends with the most beautiful two verses. From which, if somebody is so sick and need to be healed, can be healed. A secret in the Quran because some of the verses of the Quran are for healing. If you go and visit somebody who's sick, don't sit down there and just cry or feel sorry for the person. Read for them, make dua for them, make them feel comforted, make them feel gloomy. You're sitting there, oh, I feel sorry for you. Of course, he's sick, you feel sorry for them. You don't have to show that. You don't sit there crying, holding their hand, making them feel miserable. You make them feel like, okay, I'm dying, I'm gonna die. And anyway, they are in the hospital, they are feeling this is the end of it. You're supposed to be smiling. You're supposed to say, don't worry. Allah is with you. I came to visit you because I know Allah is with you. I know you're going to be healed. I know you're going to get better. You say that. And you recite for them. 
عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم هي has come to you from amongst yourself a messenger who is so caring for you and for those amongst you who believe so merciful so gentle so kind who is he محمد صلى الله فإن تولوا فقل حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو أو محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم if they turn away from you after you tell them this say Allah is my savior and he is sufficient عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم upon him I depend and he is the lord of the great throne and I talked about the throne earlier so you need to think now this surah is a beautiful surah Rasulullah said in the hadith whosoever recite those two verses and repeat the last verse seven times in his morning all day if he goes into an accident he will not be killed. And the same thing in the evening. If he goes into an accident or an accident takes place where he's around, a building falls, they will find him alive or she is alive. If somebody tries to stab you, he will not be able to. If somebody wants to shoot you, you will not be able to. You will be safe. Somebody asks, but if you are to die, death, when it comes, it comes. That's the only thing. Rasulullah said, whosoever recites la hawla wa la quwata illa billah al-aliya al-azim in his day, a hundred times, or in his night, a hundred times. Okay? Wa alaykum as Marham, my brother. Welcome. Okay? Allah will close 99 doors of test before them. 99 doors of test definitely going to go through. However, okay, one will be open, and they ask Rasulullah, which gate will be still open? The gate of death. Because when they come, they come. Only for prophets and messengers, the angel of death has to seek permission from the messenger or the prophet. But for us, he doesn't come and say, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm about to prepare you for your creator. Are you ready? <laughs> We're going to be running. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be chasing us. <laughs> uh, and therefore, many people question the hadith in Bukhari of Sayyidina Musa السلام, when he quarreled with the angel of death. Allah wants to show us even prophets are humans. But he brought the angel of death in the form of a man. Literally, to come to Sayyidina Musa and say, okay, I have to take your life. And Musa said, no. But I have to. No, you are not going to. And then they quarreled and they were wrestling. And Musa poked his eye. <laughs> <laughs> now when you read it, you think, why? But Allah wants to show you. If really us have that opportunity in life, this is what we will do. Many of us will prepare their gun. Imagine in America. <laughs> <laughs> their gun will be ready straight away what are you coming for to take my life let me take your life first that, that's what we are we want to live we love life but we don't understand the meaning of life seriously if we understand it we will enjoy living people live very short nowadays and they used to live very long if you go back 100 years 200 years people used to live longer a thousand years even longer why because now our only accomplishment is for the moment. Just to achieve the joy and the pleasure. We don't think for tomorrow or the future. We're, we're wasting today more than ever before. We don't understand. We don't appreciate. We're not grateful enough. We just want to accumulate. The difference between us and the animals is becoming very blurry. Seriously. We're not really the human we are supposed to be thinking of the future. That is something that you need to think about. Okay? So in Surah An-Nisa, the word Tawbah is mentioned. Okay? Three times. It's also mentioned in Surah Tawbah, which is Allah to show the importance of repentance. He named the whole Surah, Surah Tawbah, repentance to him. In Surah Shura, and Shura meaning consultation, to show the importance of us consulting with one another, with your wife, with your parents, with your children, we talk about dictatorship and oppression. I tell you, there are many, many men are more dictators in their home than being dictators in public. Oppressive to women. It upset me very much when Islam is linked to oppression of men to women. It upset me very much. Why? Because our Prophet wasallam was born, okay, and if you think about it carefully, 
even Isa and even Musa. Let's start with Musa. Musa alayhi salam was born. The people in his presence, okay? The queen of Egypt and the women around her. He was raised with them. And he had his mother and his sister beforehand. And then when he went to the Median, he was met by the girls. When he was taken to the house of Shu'aib, they were all girls, there's no man. So all his life he was surrounded just by women. Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam had no father. He was a miracle baby. Only his mother. Okay? So a woman was always around him. Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. Sayyidina Muhammad sallam, his father died before he was born. His mother was pregnant five months with him. And then he was looked after by three women other than his mother. Thuwaib al-Aslamiyya, Halim al-Sa'diyya, Baraka um Ayman al-Habashiyya. And then, subhanallah, he had no sons, all girls. Zainab, Ruqayya, Um Kalsum, and Fatima. And then his wives around him. Aisha, being the woman who was with him to the end. When he was in Hajjat al-Wada', the last sermon he okay, gave, subhanallah, what did he speak about? Women. And Nisa. He repeated three times, and Nisa, and Nisa, and Nisa. The women, the women. The... Why did he say that? Because he knows. When it comes to relationships between us, we the men tend to be almost thinking we are superior. Okay? Thinking we are better. That's not true. We are supposed to be handling them with care. Innahunna kal qawarir. He said, they are like glass. You don't just handle it with harshness, with gentleness, with care. And then, subhanallah, when he was so sick in his house, and he couldn't come out for salah, and he asked Abu to leave the salah, and then suddenly he got up and went and sat on the member and he was sweating buckets. They say there is no man they have ever seen sweating like that. And he gave a sermon talking and people were crying and he was insisting to the men sitting there and Nisa, alaykum bin Nisa. And he repeated it three times, emphasizing that the importance of looking after women. And when he was dying, <coughs> his head was on the lap of Aisha Radatanha. His daughter Fatima was wiping his sweat, crying, worried that he's going to leave her behind. A Bakr Sadiq is standing there. His closest friend is going to be leaving and he knows that Jibril is coming to tell the news that the angel of death is seeking permission. Can he come in? And subhanallah, he turned to Aisha, Fatima, and Abu Bakr Sadiq and says, Alaykum bis salati wa nisa. Please inform everyone, you must keep your regular daily salah prayer, you must keep it. Don't lose it. It's the most important element of your worship of Allah. It's the key to linking you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spiritually. Your spirit without salah will not be linked to Allah. No way. And therefore, you distance yourself from Allah when you don't pray. Just like you pull the plug from the wall, your computer will never work. Electricity will never be working if you pull the plug off. That's the idea. If you stop salah, no link with Allah. Salah is a link between the servant and his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nisa and Nisa and Nisa. He said it three times. <coughs> Take good care of women. Three times he repeated Alayhi Abdul So that's where I found and happiness. Yes, this surah is important. Surah Ashura, by the way, any one of you want to learn more about the relationship or to read it. Those three surahs. And the last surah is Surah Al Tahrim. Okay? When you read it, there are beautiful things in it. And Allah talks about Tawbah. So those four surahs, where Allah mentioned Tawbah, it means take good care of your relationship with Allah and with those people around you. And everything will be questioned in the Day of Judgment. Before you are questioned, you should find the answers. Is there any limit in Surah Al-Tahrim to trying to please your wife? Pardon? Is there any limit in Surah Al-Tahrim to pleasing women? Mm, there is no limit. You have limits? No, mm, but well, you are trying to find things. Rasulullah was not really trying to please Zainab bin Tijahsh, his cousin. Ahmed was trying to say to me, look, the Prophet limited the Prophet Allah limited the Prophet from pleasing women so much. Ahmed is trying to be a little bit harder. I'm trying to be a little bit softer. He did not limit him. He used to go to his يعني, cousin, his cousin wife, 
Zainab bint Jahl. And because he grew up with her as young and they are like close to one another, she knows everything he used to like, dislike. So she used to cook him the most important meal he loves. It had a component of honey in it. And he used to be so pleased. So the women came together and discussed that why he, when he goes to her, he's happy when he comes to us. It was the same. So when he realized it is the honey that she prepared for him, what did he say? I will not eat it anymore. To please his wife, said, I'm not going to eat it. Allah then questioned him. Why do you forbid what Allah made lawful for you? The idea here, for no one, for no one, you should ever, ever, ever forbid yourself from anything that Allah has made lawful. Hence, the rule in Sharia, to me, I'm so happy, everything is halal. Accept what Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said haram. If you come to me and say, E97, E40, I don't, I don't care, I will eat. Allah didn't see A47, A49. <laughs> Is it written in the Quran? Is there a hadith to say E471? There's a beautiful yogurt I love. Somebody said to me, there is E47. I said to E47 or E49, I don't care. <laughs> Extract and not to be forbidden. When we'll talk about this in a minute, this is really sad. Why are you bothering about this thing? There is three things that are haram, or four maximum. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the dead, all of it. Once an animal dies, you bury it. You don't even take anything out of it. It's all forbidden. The blood. You can't take blood, extract blood from a living animal like the Maasai tribe in Africa. They dig a hole in the cow, they take the milk, the, 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 the blood, and they mix it with milk, and they put things into and they eat it, they make it food. Like they do in Scotland, they have got a meal out of blood. I don't know what... Black pudding. Yeah, black pudding. You don't eat things like that. That's not forbidden in Islam. Okay? And, subhanallah, the last thing Allah says, وَلَحْمُ khinzir, And the flesh of the swine. He didn't say the swine. So if there are extract from the swine, in, from his, the bones, from the skin, whatever it is, somebody one day saw me in Mirish, said, Sheikh, do you know what you are wearing? I said, what am I wearing? I'm wearing shoes, for goodness sake. He said, they're made of pig skin. So I said to him, what? He said, it's haram. <laughs> I said to him, brother, I'm not eating it. <laughs> the, Allah forbade it not to consume it. Not to, <laughs> I don't know where this comes from. Where it comes from, I don't know. And then Allah says that which is being killed for others beside Allah. If somebody is worshiping an idol and said, "I kill this in the name of Z God, whatever," I don't eat it. Not for Allah, but anything with Bismillah, I eat. The people of the book, the Christian and the Jews, as long as they are Christian practicing or Jewish practicing, I don't really care. Uh, and if somebody came to me, as a Muslim in my house, said to me, brother, I would like to make sure, are you practicing Muslim? I say, why? You are offering me meat. I want to know it's halal or haram. I will ask them to leave. I'm a Muslim. <laughs> so I don't go to a Christian or a Jewish person and say, excuse me, are you practicing Jews? <laughs> I don't. This is insulting. I go to a Christian house, a Jewish house, as long as they are people who are naming themselves as Christian or Jews, and they put that which is not haram in my religion, Allah made it halal for me. Allah said in the Quran, وَطَعَامُ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ حِلُّ لَكُمْ And the food of the people of the book is lawful for you. وَطَعَامُكُمْ حِلُّ لَهُمْ And your food is halal for them. I say Bismillah and then I will eat. So let us make Islam easy, not make it difficult. And let us understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wants to make things easy. يُرِدُ بِكُمُ اللَّهُ الْيُسْرَى Allah wants ease for you and never, never ever ever he wanted difficulty or hardship for you subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? I'm so grateful that you have brought up our message today. And the reason I'm grateful is I've been working, as you know, in Oldham and Rochdale. And we have difficulties with brothers who don't know what the Quran means. Mm. not just about who they are. It's about what they should be, what their responsibilities are, what their gifts are, what men are, what men's responsibilities should be, what a marriage is, what a divorce is, about kindness, about children, about inheritance. So if, as you read on you will have a very full idea 
Allah, absolutely. May Allah bless you. That's true. But inshallah, we will, we, will, we will get into this maybe at the end. And I will talk about that a little bit. But it's important what my sister said to be thought about. So here, my topic is Tawbah. And I want to talk about what is Tawbah? What is repentance? What are we repenting from? We need to know. Why am I repenting? Should I repent? Why should I repent? From what should I repent? Okay? And then, what are, okay, the rules? Okay? Or the rights of Tawbah? Or the pillars of Tawbah? There are rules there we need to follow. And what is the medicine? How can we heal ourselves through repentance? These are four areas I'm going to mention, inshallah, and go through. Now, Tawbah, literally in Arabic, meaning ruju' meaning return or returning. Tawbah meaning to return. Come in, alaykum salam, welcome, my brothers and sisters. Can we ask people to just move a little bit forward, 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 give people room? Wasi'u wasa'allahu lakum, inshallah. Move forward, move forward. May Allah make it easy. Okay? Those two brothers there, please move forward. So literally, the word Tawbah meaning Ruju'. Come here. The place here, inshallah. You can sit with my brothers. Okay. Tawbah meaning Ruju'. Taba ay Raja'. Taba ay Raja'. Taba meaning repented or returned. Somebody who re repented meaning somebody who returned back to the origin. Now, once upon a time, I was with this great sheikh. And he explained it to me so simply, so easily. He has drawn for me a line. Okay? Like this. If I can draw the line. Okay? A line like this. Straight line. And then at the top, he wrote Allah. The Almighty. And at the bottom, okay, he wrote La ilaha Allah. So he said the key to returning to Allah is by accepting him as the only one worthy of worship. You don't worship anything but Allah. And hence you will be on the right path. Sarat al mustaqim It's why when we pray we are asking him to remain on that path. But he said if you divert right or left, if you go to the right or to the left, you need to repent. You need to return back to the point of origin, which is the straight path. How do you divert? When you make mistakes. And it's not bad to make mistakes. And I'll explain this when we come to that, inshallah. So we are going to talk about the medicine, okay? Inshallah, when we come to it. Now, as I said, a tawbah here, ruju or the repentance, is to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Literally, the scholar says, "Allama al ghiyub satar al ghiyub." Returning to whom? Allah. Allah has many attributes. To the one who knows every hidden secret, because many of us, when we sin, we repent from what is apparent, but what is hidden, we don't worry about. Nobody knows, but He knows. So they say you are repenting to the one who knows everything. So repent from that which is apparent, and more from that which is hidden. Okay, because he's aware of it. Satar al ayub the one who shelter you. Many times we make mistakes, nobody says anything about it, nobody knows about it. Doesn't matter. It matters. Because if no one hear about it or see it, he knows about it. So you need to make repentance. Because repentance is not for humans. Repentance is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, Imam Al Ghazali Rahmatullah Ali, the greatest scholar says, it is the key. Repentance is the key. For the beginning of the journey to Allah. While you are traveling, if your car breaks down, you need to mend it. You need to do something about it. So the same thing while you are traveling to Allah, if you make a mistake in order for you to get into the track and keep traveling, you need to repent. Without it, you cannot go ahead. That is very, very important. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was always repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking of him. What is it? 
What is repentance? Okay, one of the scholars says, to know the harm of the mistakes you make in your life. To know the harm of the sins that you commit. Because if you don't know the harm, you just keep making mistakes. But if you know the harm, you will keep away. I'll give you an example. You know if you fall from a height, you're going to at least break your leg, if not killing yourself. So if we all went to the top of this building, and I said to one of you, jump, he said, excuse me, <laughs> do you want me to die? <laughs> you will not jump. So you know it is not good enough to do. So here, by repenting to Allah, if you know what to repent from, because it's going to be a barrier between you and your creator, then you will repent from it. Any sin you make, by the way, it becomes a barrier between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the next thing, how do you know you need to repent? When what you committed as a sin or a forbidden act hurt you in your heart. You can't sleep. You can't eat. You can't face the person whom you sinned against. You keep lowering your head when you see them. You escape them. You are worried. You are frightened. They say it becomes so hard for you that you wish you are dead. That means you need to come out of it. You need to ask Allah to tend to you. Once Allah tends to you, this feeling will go away. Okay? And therefore in Arabic it is ta'allum al qalb. Okay? The heart pain you feel within your heart. Why that pain comes? Because you feel you have been cut off from Allah. Allah is cutting you off from him and you want to go back having that relationship. And then leaving what you are supposed to have wronged yourself with. Leaving it immediately because as long as it is there, you're going to be in difficulty. Hence Rasulullah Sallam says, giving us the meaning of tawbah, he said, An-Nadam. Allah Rasulullah Sallam, An-Nadam tawbah This is a small hadith. Everyone can memorize in Arabic even. Allah Rasulullah Sallam, An-Nadam tawbah He, peace be upon him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, regretting is repentance. Once you regret something, you have repented from it. As Rasulullah Sallam said. But if you don't regret it, no. We have people today, they tend to say, all right, yani, I forgive you. I slapped you. I forgive you for what you said. But I don't regret slapping you. <laughs> How could you say that? It doesn't make any sense. At the end of the day, you should regret what you did. When you said to somebody, I'm sorry, I regret that I have raised my hand to hit you. I shouldn't have done that. All right? This is something we need to think about. And it is compulsory, by the way. Wajiba. Okay? And you can explain it as something literally compulsory to act upon or very, very important to act upon. Why? Because Allah said in the Quran, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajim, Wa Tubu Ila Allahi Jami'an Ayyuhal Mu'minun La'allakum Tuflihun. This is Surah An-Nur, the light, verse 31. It's a beautiful Surah, Surah An-Nur. Okay? And do repent to Allah, all of you, together, all you who believe, perhaps, maybe, you will prosper or succeed. So Allah is linking success here in your daily living by repenting to Him. To me, this is an open field that means you need to tend to Allah regularly because we're making mistakes all along the day. From the time we wake up to the time we go to bed, we make too many mistakes. Some of them, we do deliberately, some of them consciously, some unconsciously, some we plot and plan for, okay? Some by accident we are there and the mistake takes place, so we need to be careful that whatever we do, we need to turn to Allah and ask His forgiveness. Allah also, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in many, many verses, speaks, okay, about people turning and asking Him for forgiveness. But the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, Ya ayyuhan nas, Tubu ila rabbikum fa inni atubu ilayh fil yawm mi'ata marra. O you mankind, do tend to Allah and seek his forgiveness. For I, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do tend to him every day an infinite time. 
100 literally meaning infinite <laughs> but to make it easier for us we can translate it as a hundred times so each one of us every day once you wake up and until you go to bed you must ask Allah a hundred times to forgive you minimum this is to me a must if you go a day without doing that that is a mistake that is a mistake you are like a builder who's carrying on building but the mistakes he's making in the building he's not correcting by the time he finishes there is too many mistakes when they hand the building over and the inspectors coming to look into it okay to take over the building they'll find too many mistakes they must be corrected before it's taken and in many cases the building constructing company is charged for those mistakes because there is a delay in the delivery of the building so why should you put yourself in that position every time you make a mistake correct it keep going correct your mistake this is what the prophet sallallahu is encouraging us there the next question from what should we repent here everybody must listen because there's too many things being said many people say different things but this is the easiest way i can make it for you we repent from sins but sins they are in two categories big sins and small sins big mistakes that we make in our life and the small mistakes we make many of them all of us we make them every day i know for sure there's no day i pass without making a mistake you make mistakes rest assured okay why i'm saying this because the prophet said in the hadith Kullu ibn adam khatta. every son of adam or daughter of adam is a sinner and the best of those who sins are those who repent, who seek forgiveness from Allah. We all sin. If somebody came to you and said to you, look, I am faultless. I never make mistakes. I am sinless. Just walk away. <laughs> Don't sit with that person. It's not human. Not human. Seriously, not human. Because human beings are made to sin. Okay? This is something that we need. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to himself, O oh, son of Adam, if you sin so much and your sins are so much that they have reached the height of the heavens and you turn to me, you will find me forgiving. You will find me forgiving. So Allah is telling you, yes, I know you're going to sin. Why should we sin or why are we allowed to sin? Because Allah created us to test us. Which student who joined any school, college or university while he's studying, does not make mistakes. I went to school, I went to college, I went to university. I did some tests, I got 100%. But rare. No student I have ever seen in my life, even the most sharpest, all their life exams and work, all of it is 100%. And therefore, you find the th people who think like that, when they make mistakes, they cry. I remember a girl in my school, very clever girl, She's a doctor now. She went to the best, I think, medical school in this country. And she, when she got her GCSE result in my school here, she did 13 GCSEs. She got eight A stars, okay, four A's, one B. She was standing in the most crying. <laughs> and her mother crying next to her. So I said to the mother, what's wrong with her? Did she fail? Said, no. What's wrong? She got eight A stars. MashaAllah. If you got five between A and C, you are successful according to the British. <laughs> she is lucky. A, five, she got eight A's. No, she got also four A's. Wow. So why is she crying? One B. <laughs> I went away. I just went away. I just, I did not even give sympathy. No, no. I, I'm not wasting my time. This is ungrateful. Am I right or wrong? Ungra don't be ungrateful. Really don't be ungrateful. This is really somebody who is not showing gratitude to Allah. The government is saying if you get five GCSEs, A to C, you succeeded. Here I have got somebody who have got eight A stars, more than what the government wants, in the highest level. Four A's, that's 12. Almost more than double what the government wants. And one B. <laughs> and B is not bad. B is a very good grade, but don't. Put B down, you see? <laughs> Don't put it down. Okay? Now, but the sins of the human being 
are of four categories. I remember I many times I talk about human beings and the complexity of the human being. I'm talking about the spirit and I'm talking about the body. I'm talking about the spirit as being faultless. The only way the spirit can fault itself is when you try to assume the role of the creator. As Pharaoh says, the pharaoh of Egypt, Ana rabbukum al-a'la. I am your Lord the Most High. This is one way. You <laughs> sin when you try to assume the role of the creator. You try to be a khaliq, a rab, a creator. You can't be. That is not for you. You are created. Yes, you are spiritually from him, but you can never be him. Number two, your nafs, your ego, that which okay, directs you to live your life. Either you choose the right or the wrong, it's up to you. Number four, the fulfillment of the need of your body, which requires a lot of needs. And number four, the last one, is the op- Session of wanting to control and have everything for yourself. There are many people like that, whom they just want to have everything for themselves. Let us look at each one of those four areas and what sins you can commit in those four areas. Okay? Assuming the role of the creator comes through arrogance. <coughs> and Allah says, Whosoever try to wear arrogance or become arrogant, I will chop them off. So arrogance is a big sin. Okay? Pride, showing pride is no good. Okay? Hence the Prophet always used to say, Wala fakhr. When he says, talks about himself, he will say, I am saying what I'm saying, not out of pride. Don't say it out of pride. Okay? People are told today, put your head up high and be proud. Be proud. This is not Islamic. We are not proud people. Loving people praises. Some people, they love it. Politicians love to be praised. Okay? They will die without praise. There are some people, if you don't praise them, they will not be able to live. You need to praise them. Just like flowers that need water. Okay? So they don't praise people. They say, in fact, when you praise somebody in front of them and they feel proud of the praises that they get, okay, and their egos is massaged, then you are causing them to enter into the zone of darkness. Don't do that to people. You are putting them down rather than raising them up. Loving life to the point that you want to live forever. Some people don't want to die. You don't talk about death about death to them. Okay? The loving of the oppression of man. Like what Hitler did. Hitler was a strange man, really to me strange, because he wanted not just to be like Pharaoh, but he wanted others to be oppressed. And he says it, because I am from the highest blood of the human beings. Nobody is higher than me. And therefore anybody else who is not from the same blood should be put down. That's not proper. Okay? And jealousy. Very sad. And jealousy, we can all have it. And by the way, you must seek refuge from the envy of the envious when he envies. Min shari hasidin is a hasad. People say, oh, how come it is there? People are very, very jealous. There are some people whom you eat with, you drink with, sometimes they are related to you, sometimes they are close to you. And once you succeed in something that they are with you, rather than praising Allah for what you have achieved, they are wishing in their heart that Allah will take the success away from you. They don't want you to succeed. They are so upset inside, the smile that you see in their faces, it's, it hurts them. They don't want to smile, but they are doing it to show that they are happy. Well done. But really inside, they are not wishing you success. They are wishing you failure. Okay? Okay. And attacking people by bad thoughts, by having bad feeling towards them. There are some people who just, I don't know where they come from. And they sit like this. You come in, this brother just walked in. Some people are just sitting there, who is he? Why is he coming? He's disturbing us. <laughs> Keep your thought to yourself. <laughs> in the dhani is when indeed some of your suspicion is haram. Maybe this is the best person ever to sit among all of us here. 
So don't make no. And also some people have these feelings. You say, did you introduce yourself? No, I don't feel good about them. Astaghfirullah. When he came, I was thinking, why did he come so late? <laughs> <laughs> don't think like that. There must be a reason. <laughs> We're just licking what you did to the lesson. Nothing to do with you. <laughs> and Ahmed wants to make a joke out of it. Okay? And plotting against people. You know there are some people terrible. You, have you seen sometimes you get to a new place, you are in a job or in a new college, and the first people you get to know them, you sit with them and say, you know something, yeah? That one that you see there, avoid him. Why? Just I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't know anything. I'm new, I'm just saying hello. I don't want to know anything. No, avoid, <laughs> you know? Especially at work. Seriously, avoid by all means people like that. Whenever I go, I have learned a big lesson that I should never associate myself with people who will tell you, did you see that one there? I don't want to see. I don't want to know. Did you hear this? Did you hear that? I don't want to know. I want to see everybody as beautiful as I see them. I want to know everything as wonderful as I want to know about them. And if I see any wrong in them, even if it is true, I see by my eyes or heard by my ear, I will shelter them. I will never expose them. So the idea of exposing people is no good. Allahumma sturna bisitrika al-jamil. Oh Allah, shelter us with your most beautiful sheltering. Whosoever shelter a believer, when he sees them or hear them saying the wrong, Allah will shelter them in the day. Where there is no shelter, only his shelter. Um, the thing is, I find that if you try and do that and just see the good in people, then other Muslims will see the bad in people. Oh, too naive, you don't know the world. And then we'll kind of... No, you're not naive. You are bright when you judge people to be good. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given us the position of judging people. Allah said, Fala Whenever you judge somebody to be bad, by bad thoughts or bad feeling, or just by looking at the impression or things or you hear rumors about them, you put yourself in the position of the judge. And there is only one judge. Allah said in the Quran, Alayhi sallahu bi ahkamil hakimin, isn't Allah is the wisest, fairest, righteous of judges? It is he who can judge. What do I know? I know nothing. Would I like people to talk bad about me? Would I like people to judge me to be bad or evil? So I shouldn't judge them. Okay? Be careful. Don't put you, ever put yourself in that position. Yeah, just no. Justice, justice is not in our hand individually. Justice is in the hand of the judge. If it is to do with living, a livelihood, a relationships, there must be somebody to judge. Okay. And judging people, being righteous or not, it's not in our hand, but it's in the hand of the righteous. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa taala. But being strong in justice, literally, what Allah is trying to say. If you have a right and you want to gain your right, then go about it through the right way and be strong in putting your case to get the justice that you deserve. That's the idea. But if I don't know the person, I don't judge. And today, people judge you by your appearance. If a woman walked in and she doesn't wear a hijab, a lot of people think, oh, she's not a good Muslim. Who says so? Who says so? If a man walks in without a beard, oh, he's not a good Muslim. So... This is not the way to judge people. <coughs> and there are people by nature, they love to judge people. And I, I sometimes walk into places and people say, look at the way he's standing. I say, what? Look at the way he's standing. Who? That one there. Do you know him? No. Why are you talking? <laughs> what is this? This is what I mean. When you are becoming the judge of righteousness, goodness, okay, for people. Where Allah did not give you that. Allah said, Fala to the Quran for the Quran. You should never, ever, ever put yourself in a higher pedestal than others. The Prophet said, Man tawada alillah rafa'u. Whosoever humble himself before Allah, Allah will raise him. Be humble. 
don't put yourself in that position. I want to carry on. Okay? And then, encouraging people to do evil. It's a sign of assuming a position that is not yours. Be careful. Cheating people. Hypocrisy. Inviting people to do things against the teaching of Allah or Rasulullah Wasallam. Okay? Now, this is something that you should always avoid by all means. Because at the end of the day, you are here to live your life to achieve success for yourself. But that success can never be a success without you doing it with sincerity, following the teaching of Allah from the Holy Quran and the teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from what he has said, done or approved while he was living amongst us alayhi wa salatu wa salam okay now when we come to I saw somebody's coming okay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن تجتنبوا كبائر ما تنهون عنه نكفر عنكم سيئاتكم وندخلكم مدخلا كريما If you avoid the big sins that we have forbidden for you, we will forgive your sins and we will allow you to enter from a noble entrance. Okay? Literally Allah here is trying to say to us, there are sins that you should avoid by all means. They are called kabair. There is many books written about this. There is a book, Kitab al-Kabair. Many people maybe have read the book of the big sins. In fact, when I joined my present employment, I was asked to give every teacher working with me or an employee this book. So I said, why? He said, because every one of them must have It's a huge book. So I said... They're just normal people. Why are you trying to put them in this kind of position? They said, no, no, no. They must avoid. In fact, include everything. And I'll show you what the Quran means by kabair. To me, there are four sins that are big. If you avoid them, the rest then can be categorized in different categories. And you have to be careful. However, if you avoid arrogance, you avoid putting your soul in difficulty with the Creator because arrogance put you in a position whereby you are trying to assume okay, a position of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you avoid okay, things like being a hypocrite, lying, cheating, deceiving, breaking promises, okay, going out of your way to put people in difficulty and problems, trying to do that which Allah has forbidden, Okay, openly and encourage people to do it, that is shaitanic. That is really from shaitan. You need to be very careful because shaitan is there to the end. Until you die, he will never leave you alone. Why? Because he promised the Creator Almighty God. And he says, O oh Allah, by your honor and might, I will misguide all of them. So all of us are included in that oath Iblis or shaitan has given Allah. Why did he give that oath? Because he was jealous. Jealous of whom? Of Adam, who will come to assume living in this world where he comes from, but he will have the upper hand. We have the upper hand. Today, okay, what we say ghosts, which is to do with the jinn where Iblis come from, are hidden. We can't see them. They used to be apparent, but Allah has hidden them. Why? Because we took the bigger role. We are here. They cannot even receive messengers from themselves. All the messengers from the jinn are humans. You know that. All the messengers who deliver messages from Allah to the jinn as an entity, they are not from the jinn. There are no jinn's messengers. Only human beings. So whatever you talk about as ghosts, which is hidden, not... By the way, there is a mistake. People think ghosts are dead people who come back again. No. As a Muslim, you should never think like that. No human being after he's buried is, comes back. No way. Only the martyrs who are not living on this earth and they come as ghosts and they frighten you and you run away from them, they come as they were. So a martyr who lives in the heavens 
and should not be considered as dead as Allah said ولا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء do not ever think that those who were martyred for the sake of God are dead but living a life with their Lord sustained how we don't know but they can come and they can go and they come better than they were because they come spiritually with that power and this is something that we need to think about when you come and think about your status as being like an animal, okay? This is something that you need to think about when you are trying to fulfill your desires of eating and drinking, okay? And having uh, relationships which are not proper and all those things and being rude and being vulgar. This is not acceptable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? And then, if it is to do with the character of the beast, whereby he does not show any preferences with the animals that are in the jungle, whereby you want to take from everybody in front of you, right or wrong, come in. Okay? There are people outside. A little bit forward, forward, forward. So sorry. Until you reach my table, no problem. <laughs> Walaikum assalam, my brother. Welcome. So I've got to repeat this again, please. I want you to concentrate with me. Okay? When you are acting with arrogance, okay, that's the position whereby you are trying to assume the position of the Creator Almighty, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden that. When you act with jealousy, okay, hypocrisy, and trying to be a cheat and deceiving people, or becoming a deceived person, then that is shaitanic, according to the scholars. When you are wanting to possess everything, okay, and having everything and do that which is forbidden, and cheating people of their wealth, and doing all that which will just sustain you in this world here, whether it is right or wrong, that is animalistic. You are behaving like an animal. And when you are angry, okay, full of grudges in your heart and hatred to everything and everyone around you, then you become like a beast in the jungle. That is also need to be restrained. Okay? And here, Allah said in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الذين يتنبون كبير الإثم والفواحش إلا اللمم and those who will avoid the big sin or sins and the vulgar rude okay actions or where that they say or do except for the small little mistakes that they carry out in their life this is Surah An-Najm meaning Allah will forgive the little and maybe forgive the bigger sins if they are aware of what they have done and they turn to him and ask of him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also to tell us that there are big sins and the small sins. He says in the hadith, as salawatul khams, the five daily prayers, wal jum'ah, and the Friday prayer, yukaffirna ma baynahunna in itunibat al-kabair. They will wipe away all the sins if you avoid the big sins. So if you pray your five daily prayers, fajr, dhuhr, asr, maqrib, isha, and on Friday you pray your jum'ah, and by the way, Jum'ah can be for male and female, no problem. And Jama'ah in the mosque can be for male and female. It's so beautiful when I open the television and look at the Kaaba, and women are mixed with the men. You see that? A man with his family is praying together. There is no distinction. In the greatest place on this earth, the Kaaba, the house of God. That's the biggest mosque on the earth. No distinction. And here I am living in the 21st century in the Western world and there are mosques built and in their constitution no woman should step in this mosque. Why? Haram. <laughs> Seriously. It is, doesn't make sense to me. It's cultural perhaps but not religious. It's not from the deen that I believe in and I follow because women should be encouraged. Yesterday, the day before yesterday's Eid, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to encourage his women 
to go to the eat prayer. But we don't want to do that, okay? And this is very sad. We should be very careful, okay? And then in another riwaya, another narration of this hadith, he said, Kafarat lima bayinuhunna illa al-kabair. This will wipe away all the sins except for the big sins. Okay? This is reported in Sahih Muslim, by the way. Now, what are the kabair? What are the big sins that we should avoid by all means? Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-As, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the conqueror of Egypt, he's buried today in Egypt. If you go to Egypt, go to Cairo, you must go and visit the mosque of Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-As. It's a beautiful mosque, one of the nicest mosques you visit, and he is buried there. Okay? That is something you need to do, inshallah. Amr ibn al-As is not known where he is buried. They say in the mountain in Cairo. But Abdullah is known. His mosque, he is buried there. Just like Imam Shafi'i, is Hussein is buried there. Okay? This mosque are beautiful mosque. He says, Qala Rasulullah sallam, al-kabair, the big sins. Who says them? The Prophet sallam. He is the teacher to me. And from him I take my lesson. He says, al-ishraq billah, taking partners with God. This is the big sin. Committing sins against your parents. Being abusive, being oppressive to your parents is a big sin in the sight of God. Because Allah said, Be grateful to me and to your parents. I created you, but your parents <coughs> created you by coming together and produced you. Without them you are not nothing. How could you turn to the one who carried you for nine months in her stomach and weaned you for two years, maybe some people until they die, their mothers are caring for them, ironing their shirt, <laughs> doing their things, mommy, what is for dinner? And then you tend to answer to her awful word and you swear at your mother, you hit your mother. <coughs> what kind of a human are you? You are just like turning to Allah and saying, I, I don't believe in you. Anyone who oppresses his mother, in my eyes, is not a human being. <coughs> you don't oppress your mother. Paradise is beneath the mother's feet. My mother is the most important human. Before I married my wife, she's not here, is she? <laughs> she always said to me, why do you say that? I said to her, look, I want to tell you from now. Women are supposed to be looked after, cared for, everything. But there is a category of respect. Allah comes first. So when the time of Salah comes, I will go for my Salah. When the commandment of Allah is to be fulfilled, I'll fulfill the commandment of Allah. Then Rasulullah Sallam comes second. For Allah said in the Quran, and when the messenger call you for that which will bring your life, here and hereafter, you must adhere to him. I will adhere to the teaching of the Prophet Sallam. I will not restrain myself. She was looking, and then, who is next? <laughs> I said, my spiritual father. Who is your spiritual father, for goodness sake? <laughs> I said, the one who taught me who Muhammad Sallam is, and who Allah is my sheikh, because without him, my father always used to say to me, go to him first. My mother always said to me, go to him first. Don't come to us until you consult him, because that is to do with right or wrong, halal, that's to do with the hereafter. And then I said, and she was grasping her, who is next? I said, my mother. Your mother? <laughs> I said, my mother. Why? I said, she carried me for nine months, for goodness sake. She was in pain when she delivered me. If she dies, she'll be a martyr. And she looked after me until I was able to look after myself. I said to her, thank God I left my mother when I was 11. But some of my brothers lived with her until she, they died. They were there with her. My oldest brother is still alive. And my mother used to ask him like a baby. I go to Sudan, I'm sitting there. Did you eat? My goodness. <laughs> it's like my grandfather. When, I, when you see him, it's like my grandfather. You saw my oldest brothers. And amazing. You see, but this is mothers for you because they love you, they care for you. Like Allah loves you and cares for you. Yeah, this is this is the idea. And then I said, My father. And she said, What? I said, however, my father said to me, put your mother, your wife first, because women are important than men. So we are before my father. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the category. This is the way you should No, seriously, this is really very serious. Men who prefer their wives to their mothers are crazy. <laughs> because this wife, she should remember, one day she will have children, she must teach her children that I am the mother. Without me, you will not be in this world. I am the mother. 
Okay, and there should not be conflict between the mother and the wife. Therefore, when I came to the West, I was shocked when they make jokes about the mother-in-law. <laughs> Sad. The mother-in-law is so important. <laughs> Seriously, so important. You need to respect your mother-in-law. Okay, because she is really your mother. Because she has assumed that role once you got married into the family. Because you're not married just to the person, to the family. Okay? Many men get it wrong. And then, قَتْلُ nafs, Taking away the life. Killing someone. Today it's easy. It's very sad. People killing. Just to kill somebody is nothing. All the children games today are not good games. The children will cry and they don't want them if they are just... Uh, they call them lovey dovey stories. They don't want them. They want with killing and blood and you see? seriously. Go and take buy a film or a cartoon for children. If there's no killing in it, they don't want it. And that is the wrong thing. You should never teach them that. Well Yamin al Qamus. Yamin is known, yeah? An oath. What is Qamus? When you make an oath that is false. To, to deliberately put somebody in difficulty. You know this person have not done wrong, but you become a witness, not just a witness against him, but you swear by God that he has done it or not. He's innocent. Okay? That is absolutely terrible. So these are the four things that we should all avoid. Okay? Avoid them by all means. Assuming, okay, there is a God beside Allah, no way. Take it away. Being evil to your parents, no way. Killing someone, no way. And making an oath, okay, that is false, they should never be careful. Because once you do it, you are putting yourself in a position where Allah will not be pleased with you. However, when we look at sinning in general, in one of the narration of the Prophet Sallam, it says that there are three areas as well we need to think about where the sin could be with whom. Okay? At Dawawin Thalasa. The areas are three. The one yukfar, with the one la yukfar, with the one la yutrak. An area, Allah will forgive. An area, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive. And an area, Allah will not leave. One will forgive, one will not forgive, one will not leave. For the one alladhi yukfar, dhunub al-ibad baynahum, wa bayna Allah. The area where Allah forgives sins, is the sins between you and Allah. You didn't pray a prayer. Allah could punish you for that or forgive you. Allah said, give your zakah. You didn't pay your zakah. It's up to him to forgive you or to punish you. And this is beautiful, subhanallah, about Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. When in the day of judgment, when it came to worship, Allah said to Isa, Oh Isa, did you and your mother say to your people to take you and worship you as God beside me? This is to do with worship. And what did Isa say? Wicked, evil people, oh Allah. I didn't teach them that. They are kuffar, they are hypocrites. Punish them in the hellfire. Put them in the deepest. Did he say that? He didn't say that. Look at the mercy. He says, my Lord, I haven't said it. But if I have said it, you are more aware of it than myself. For I know nothing about you, but you know everything about me. If you punish them, my Lord, they are your servant. You created them. However, if you forgive them and show them mercy, you are oft forgiving most merciful. People ask me sometimes, if a non-Muslim pass away and I went to give condolences to the family, am I allowed? Are you human? <laughs> yes, I'm human. Then if you are human, you should. Human beings should be given condolences because losing somebody is a test from Allah. If you, and imagine... You lost your child. People come to you and say to you, we are sorry for your loss and this and that and sitting with you, okay? Making you feel whole again. And suddenly, they lose somebody and they say, no, I'm not going to them. Why? Because they are kuffar. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make any sense to me. A man rang me, said to me, I feel so sad. I became a Muslim many years back. I learned one of the most beautiful things in Islam is to come together at a time of loss for somebody. Anybody who lost anybody from people I know, I go with them. However, today I lost my mother. And not one single person came to me. The only thing I could feel is that because my mother is not a Muslim. But is that a reason for them not to come and at least console me, heal me, stand by me at a time of loss? 
So I said to him, they are wrong. I am questioning now. Is it right for me to go to visit the city where my mother will be buried, my brothers and my family will be there, and they will be in a chapel or a church? Am I allowed to go there? Am I allowed to stand by them? Is it halal in Islam? I am confused, my brother. I said, don't be confused. You are allowed to go. What shall I say? I said, do you say what the Quran says? Read from Surah Al-Baqarah. The verses where Allah says, and indeed we will test you with some fear and a reduction in your wealth and those whom you love by death and that which you accumulated by living and earning, okay? Your buildings, whatever you have gained in life. But Allah says, give the good tidings for those who will act with patience. Those whom when they are conflicted, okay? with a musibah that means something like this happening to them Allah is taking what he has given away from them they say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raj'un we are from Allah and to him definitely we will be returned <laughs> Allah said ulaik alayhim salawatun min rabbihim those whom Allah will shower them with mercy and comfort them and put peace and tranquility in their hearts wa rahma and Allah will shower them with mercy Okay? This is very, very important. Very, very important. And then when you read those verses, I said to him, then if you want to pray for your mother, yes, you are allowed. But read the prayer of Sayyidina Isa to his people, okay? And it will be good. And he, subhanallah, listened to me, wrote everything, and he went and did what I told him. He said to me, not one single member of my family, those who even stopped talking to me after I embraced Islam, only came and embraced me, and they were crying and saying, we didn't know. Thank you for coming. Thank you for saying such beautiful words. Because he's not saying his words. He's only repeating the word of the Creator, Almighty God. Please, let us not make religion so harsh and so hard where the Creator Almighty, in his own word, says, Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful. He is the lenient, he is the gentle, he is the kind. This is Allah. Allah is merciful. Allah's mercy comes before his anger. Okay? Allah is ghafurur rahim. Allah is more, uh, most forgiving, most merciful. And this is something that we need to think about. And then, أَمَّا الدِّيْوَانَ الَّذِي لَا يَخْفَرْ فَالشِّرْكِ The area where Allah will not forgive is when you commit association with Allah by taking partners to him. Shirk. إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ The greatest of sins that you commit in your life when you assume partners to Allah, when you take partners, because you are making them from your own imagination. You shouldn't. <laughs> Allah is one. Allah wahid subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَمَّا الدِّيْوَانَ الَّذِي لَا يُتْرَكَ Okay? فَمَا ظَالِمُ الْعِبَادِ The area that Allah will not forget, but He will delay for the hereafter, is the wronging that you have carried out in your life against people. If you take from somebody, if you abuse somebody, if you abuse somebody, whatever, insult somebody, and he didn't take his right, no justice was done on this earth, justice will take place in the hereafter. You understand? So whatever you do against people will be judged in the day of judgment. This is reported by Imam Ahmad wal Hakim, okay, in the Hadith Sahih. All right. Tawbah to whom should be given? Who should be receiving repentance from Allah? Allah said, وَلَيْسَتِ التَّوْبَةِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ حَدَمُ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنِ Remember everyone sitting here, don't say, look, I'm still young. Life is here to enjoy. I must cheat this one, deceive that one, lie here, kill somebody or two, doesn't matter. It's life. It's fun. And then when I'm old, I'm near to the grave. I'm in my last breath. And then I can say, Oh Allah, now I'm repenting. <laughs> Allah said it clearly here. وَلَيْسَتْ And it will not be accepted. The repentance from those who deliberately do the sin until they are in the dead position or the death position. In their dead, uh, deathbed. Okay? Then one of them will say, I'm repenting for you, oh Allah, now. Allah said, no. 
I'm not accepting. This is serious. I hear it a lot among the Muslim people who were born in Islam. They say, look, enjoy yourself. Don't go to Hajj. In fact, there are some parents who tell their children, why are you doing this thing? You're young. Go out, enjoy yourself. <laughs> As if this person is going to live forever. You might die young. You see? And you hear this silly thing. People say, oh, he was so young and he just died. So what? This is not for the old people. This is for the time when Allah has destined you to live up to. That's it. When the time is finished, your time is finished. Whether young or old. My grandfather from my father's side <coughs> died. He was 106 years old. I remember him now. He was fit. He goes to the mosque every salah. He was not one single teeth was lost. Not one single uh, yani, hearing was lost or his sight. He was good. Fit man. He went to Hajj that year. And visited all the scholars he used to know and divided his book between them. Okay? I saw him. I remember him. Okay? But I have a brother who died 60 years old. Okay? He was not married. He saw Muhammad, my brother, and he didn't have children. So what? I have nephews and nieces who lost their life very younger than that, you see? And many people die. Many people die before even they are born in the womb of their mothers. So what? This is the, the time distance for you. This is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't plan it and say, look, I'm going to live life and when the time comes, and many Muslims link their repentance with going to Hajj. So you say to the person, you have got every means to go to Hajj. I'm still young. What do you mean? Well, after I do Hajj, I want to repent totally. I'm just still, I'm still enjoying myself. But seriously, in some countries, it is, it is said, in many countries, say, don't go to Hajj young. Astaghfirullah. If you can, go because Hajj is by means. Okay? Who should receive repentance? Indeed, repentance is for those who sin in ignorance, without knowledge. They don't deliberately went out committing the sins and plotting and planning. Then they will repent immediately, straight away. Just like you're walking in the street, you hear somebody, you don't walk 10 minutes and come back and say, where is that person? Why? I want to say sorry. You don't do that. You tend to say, sorry, even if they are gone. If you are a good person, you straight away feel, I am wrong. Sorry, please. Because I'm in a rush. I hit you. I shouldn't hit you. So when you wrong someone, you should rush to say sorry. When you wrong yourself, turn to Allah and say, I am sorry immediately. Okay, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to do. And this is a commandment in the Quran that tawbah should be after every sin we commit. Allah said in the Quran, in Surah Fussilat, Verse 24. A good deed is not equal to a bad deed. Always wipe away the evil deed or the bad deed with the good deed. Okay? And Rasul our messenger peace be upon him, he said in the hadith, Follow the bad deed with a good deed, it will wipe it away. Once you wrong yourself, just straight away seek forgiveness. I find it the best medicine for me. I don't know about you. Whenever I do something wrong, I immediately <laughs> try to seek forgiveness. And the best thing is to go and pray to Raga'az. Where do we learn this from? From the Prophet It is reported by the companions. Okay? مَا حَزَّبَ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أَمْرًا إِلَّا وَرَكَعَ رَقْعَتَانْ Abdullah ibn al-Khattab Ibn Mas'ud, okay, and others from the companion says, we have learned from the Prophet ﷺ and Ibn Abbas as well, that whenever the Prophet is confronted by a dilemma, something that is worrying him, a difficulty, it could be something that you do wrong yourself for us, only he prayed two rak'ahs and then ask Allah. So what a beautiful thing to do. When you pray, you are linking to Allah. Straight away, pray two rak'ahs and then ask Allah to forgive you. I remember every time the Prophet ﷺ prayed his fard prayer, Zuhur, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, or Fajr, or Jum'ah, okay? straight away he will say, Astaghfirullah, Al-Azim, Al-Ladhi, La ilaha illa huwa al-Hayya al-Qayyum, wa atubu I seek forgiveness from Allah, the living, the eternal, the great one. And I do repent unto him. This is something that he used to do three times after every salah. Today people don't do that. 
I'm assuming that once they finish their salah, they think, oh, my salah is perfect. Like the student who goes to an exam and come out and he, he will say, well, if I'm not given a star or an A star or a distinction, the examiner head need to be tested. So confident that they have done the right song, thing. But they did not even revive their work. In many cases, as a teacher myself, for the last 30 years, I tell a student, please revise your answers. And I go around and I see mistakes. Simple mistakes they make. I can't tell them it is there. I will not cheat for them. But I want them to go out. You always tell them, look, read your paper again. Hoping that they will be wise enough when they, oh my son, God, two plus two is equal four and I put five. In a rush, thinking that they know everything and they make simple mistakes. Okay? Now, what are the rights of Tawbah? What will make a Tawbah really a real repentance, a real, okay, turning back to Allah? A Turk, wal Nadam, Talab al Maghfira, wal Azma ala Allah Ya'ud. Four things. Immediately you cut yourself from the sin that you committed. Don't carry it on. Don't keep doing the sin, Astaghfirullah, 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 and you are doing the sin. That is joking. You're not doing, you stop what you are doing as, as a sin. This is like you want to apologize to somebody whom you just hit and you keep hitting them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't really mean it. I keep slapping them. <laughs> you are sinning and then saying to Allah, forgive me. Forgive me? This is not. I always say to the brothers, it makes me feel very sad. You see people walking in certain part of London. I don't want to mention where. And they're walking. Subhanallah. Astaghfirullah. 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 Subhanak. Ya Rabbi. <laughs> What do you say, brother? What are you doing? هذا الجمال, this beauty. Subhanallah, astaghfirullah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. You have seen things like that. I have seen it many times. But it makes me just wonder. Allah is showing me things that it makes you laugh. As if Allah is trying to show you, look at this. This is a joke. <laughs> you can't do that. Okay? So you leave what you have done wrong immediately and then regret. And real repentance Bend in the heart. You feel sorry. Okay? And nafs al Okay? When your soul blames you inside. Why did you do that? You regret what you have done. That is where the tawbah become real tawbah. As the Prophet said in the hadith. And then saying this beautiful word. Astaghfirullah. Some people don't know or don't want to say it. Astaghfirullah. Literally meaning, I say for granted. One day the Prophet ﷺ came into a majlis like this and said, Astaghfirullah al azim The companion by nature, whatever the Prophet used to say, they repeat. Because they know it is good. So they all said, Astaghfirullah al azim Then he said 10 to them and said, repeat it 70 times. So they kept repeating it. This is a hadith sahih. So today if I sat and I started saying, Astaghfirullah al azim Astaghfirullah al azim and people repeating with me, people say, what is this? It's from the Prophet Sunnah. It is there. But they don't want to look into it. They don't want to read it. It's up to them. Okay, but it is there. And then, to promise yourself before Allah that I will not come back to this again. But you are human. You might, you might fall again into the same sin, but rush to ask Allah to forgive you. Okay? So leaving the sin immediately, regretting what you have done, seeking forgiveness from Allah, and promising yourself before Allah that you will never return. These are the rights of Tawbah. Okay? And then, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لله أفرح بتوبة أحدكم. The Prophet was saying, by Allah Almighty God, Allah is most happiest when one of you turn to Him in repentance. Imagine, because He created you to test you. I can't in the school. The bad teacher, the bad parents, is when their children at home doing their homework. And the father or the mother says, "Have you done your homework?" Yes. And then we look at the you silly little boy. You stupid son. What is this? This is wrong. How could you say that? Or the teacher will say to the child, you are dumb. <laughs> you can't say that. I was shocked when I came to this country and I was teaching math in some English schools. And Allah, little English boys, little, and they were frightened from mathematics. I love math. And all of them said to me, I hate math. <coughs> I say, why? Because I'm a dumb teacher. What? I'm dumb. Why are you saying that? Because everybody said I'm dumb. Allah is very sad. 
I, I don't like teachers like that. If I hear a teacher or a parent telling their children, you are dumb or you are thick or you have no brains, no. I will fight them. Because at the end of the day, we are all equal when it comes to this. Unless this inside, physically it is wrong. There is a, a disease. Yeah? Like dyslexia. Now somebody is ill. But even that one, you have no right to call them dumb or thick. All humans by right, they are intelligent. Allah has made them intelligent. But they need nurturing. They need teaching. They need knowledge. Okay? Bring me the worst child that you think in your eyes. As long as they are not physically ill, they can become the most sharpest kid. And therefore the best teachers are those who will take the least expected to succeed and they make them successful. Not those whom they are already successful. So if the child is already successful and I'm getting the A star or the parents are bringing a tutor and paying every day from their blood and then I think I succeeded, rubbish. You didn't succeed anything. Okay? So this is something that you need to think about okay, carefully. Allah said in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وهو الذي يقبل التوبة عن عباده ويحف عن السيئات Your Lord, my brothers and sisters, is the Lord of forgiveness and repentance. He says, it is He, Allah, who accepts repentance from His servants and forgives the sins. This is the Lord I love. Okay? Allah forgives. As long as we can turn to Him and ask Him to forgive our sin. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also said, the forgiveness of the sin is to regret it. Regret what you have done wrong. I dislike brothers say, oh, I remember the days of my jahiliya. <laughs> I'm sure you hear it one time. Some brothers come to me and say, Sheikh, you know in jahiliya, oh, that place you see there? Oh, what a wonderful day they used to spend there. Astaghfirullah <laughs> al-Azim. If it is a day of ignorance, you spend enjoying that, that means your nafs, like an animal, would love to go back there. Regret it. I do something always. My family asks me, why do you, whenever I pass a place where alcohol is sold like a pub or a bar, I, I just run a little bit. <laughs> and always when they ask me, why do you do that? I said, an old man once visited Britain <laughs> in the 80s. And I walk with him in the street and he was teaching me. He was one of my teachers. And he used to come especially to do this and go. And subhanallah, I was privileged. And he was saying to me one day very angrily, I used to go, as he was in his 90s, I used to travel to mountains. I used to travel to horrible places to gain knowledge because the sheikh who was teaching it, I'm supposed to go to him. Some of them I find is still living. Some of them are dying in their bed. Some of them they have already died. But what I went to, I will get. Look at today. I come to you. <laughs> it's bad. It's not good for me. It's bad. That means our time is really bad. Not a good time for learning because talabul ilm, you seek knowledge. Knowledge should not come to you. Al ilm yu'ta wa la Knowledge you go to, it doesn't come to you. He was not praising me. He's saying, What is this? Because I, had, I didn't have an opening to travel to find him. So he knows this is an amana in his hand. He has to deliver to me. He was finding and coming and teaching. So when we are passing, sometimes he will, he's an old man, he will be running and pulling his julbab. So I said to him one day, Why are you doing this? He said, You keep asking me. Don't you notice? Don't you see? I said, see what? I'm not noticing. I'm just looking at beautiful roads. <laughs> London. Beautiful building, beautiful architecture. He said, look back. And one day I looked back, it was a pub. So I said to him, what's running for? He says, when I run away from it, I'm trying to tell myself and to prove to my creator, thank you for not allowing me to be indulging with those inside whom they have chosen that way of life. You have forbidden that. I thank you for not allowing my nafs to wanting that. Not putting them down, not doing anything, okay, to make them feel this way or that way. But hamba alaykum as salam rahmatullah. Welcome Ismail Eid Mubarak. Very, very important to think of this, please. Okay? Don't look at people who are doing haram and say, oh, look at those idiots committing haram. Like some Muslims standing there shouting and people are committing haram. You don't go to the bar or the pub or the place where sinning is taking place and you shout at the people telling them off, you kuffar, you're going to the hellfire. No, no. What is this? Not the way. No, no. Not our way. Our way is just to walk away from it and thank Allah for not being in that position and hoping Allah will guide those who are in. Praying, asking him like the prophets used to do. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also said, At-ta'ibu min al man la The one who repent from sin will be sinless. 
He is as if, okay, just been born new, no sin. And by the way, for those who have converted to Islam, how lucky you are. The Prophet وسلم, said in the hadith, Islam will Islam will wipe away everything before it. One brother came very angry. He said, but, but if they committed all that, they have all the pleasure, they enjoy themselves, everything. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? Said, but they have done everything. All the big sin, everything. I said, well, it doesn't matter. They have returned back to their origin. They came back to their creator. Allah is so happy that they came back to him. I'm going to be angry, then I'm going to be jealous. <coughs> I'm not going to be. I'm happy for them. Any convert Muslim... I am so happy for them because everything they have done is gone. Whether they killed, whether they committed shirk, whether they, whatever. Everything haram they have done in their life is wiped away. And in fact, if they strive in Islam to do good and they began to serve humanity with sincere okay, intentions, all their sins Allah could change to good deeds. So the more sins they have done, the more good deeds. خياركم في الجاهلية خيارُكم في الإسلام. The best of you in jahiliya, they will be the best of you in Islam. The best of you at the time of ignorance before Islam, they will be the best. So if you are a person who did a lot of good before Islam, Allah could convert all your good to good deeds. So you could supersede those who are born in Islam. Something that Allah is just about. Allah says, استغفروا ربكم إنه كان غفارا. Seek forgiveness from your Lord, for indeed He is forgiving. Okay. Seek forgiveness from your Lord, for indeed He is forgiving. Don't you ever think for any moment Allah will not forgive you. There are those who are by nature gloomy, sad, angry. They wake up from the morning to the evening. They have nothing but to complain. Don't complain. Thank Allah. Thank Allah. You know, the heaviest thing in your scale in the Day of Judgment is when you say Alhamdulillah. Do you know that the most important, important surah in the Quran, Al-Fatiha, begins with Alhamdulillah. Come on. Let us be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank Allah. Okay? Thank Allah. And if you really want to be among the zakirin, those who are always remembering Allah, increase your saying by your tongue of the two lightest word on the tongue, heaviest on the scale, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Repeat it. If you do this before sunrise a hundred times, a hundred times before sunset, I promise you by Allah, even if your sins as much as the form of the ocean than the sea water, Allah will forgive all of them. Amen. It's a hadith of Rasulullah. He says so. Only if you don't want Allah to forgive you, it's up to you. But I will strive, I will teach my children to strive every morning, every evening, they must repeat this a hundred times. Subhanallah wa hamdihi, subhanallah wa hamdihi, subhanallah. It's easy. كلمتان خفيفتان على اللسان ثقيلتان في الميذان Two words are light on the tongue to say as a statement but heavy on the scale in the devil's judgment. Allah will give you a lot of reward for that. So keep repeating that inshallah. Okay? And Allah said وَقُرْ رَبِّ اخْفِرْ وَرْحَمْ And say O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم My Lord forgive and show mercy. I love this verse. وَقُرْ رَبِّ اخْفِرْ وَرْحَمْ وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّحِمِينَ Repeat it. What a beautiful verse. When you find yourself in difficulty, people are standing there and there is a long queue and they're agitated and they're worried and uh, they're going to miss whatever they're going to miss and, and they want to fight somebody and if somebody just touches them, they will swear at them. And If you are in that kind of condition, difficulty, just keep repeating istighfar. It will make it easy, I promise you. Okay? Make it easy for you. Allah says in the Quran, فَإِنَّهُ كَانَ الْأَوَابِينَ غَفُورًا for indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those who keep returning to him, he is definitely forgiving. Keep returning to Allah. Al-Awabin, by the way, are those who are always choosing to return to Allah before returning to the creature or the created being. Always return to Allah. Whenever you have a difficulty in your life, a problem, a dilemma, even if suddenly you wake up, you felt ill, and you have an important thing, oh, why am I ill? Don't first just pick yourself and ring your doctor. Doctor, oh, I don't feel very well. Something is wrong with me and I have an important appointment, I have an interview, I, whatever it is, an exam. No, believe it, Dr. Ferris, turn to Allah himself. Turn to, I say, oh Allah, I have this important issue, you are aware of it more than me. Please help me. And remember, Perhaps you dislike something that is good for you. Perhaps. Allah will show you then. 
Okay. Either he will relieve you, or and then you can ring your doctor or ask the human beings to guide you in the matter. The last part of this is how can we achieve okay the forgiveness? All right. What's the way through which we can cleanse ourselves? What are we cleansing in the first place? Our heart. The Prophet Sallallahu says, sinning is like having a mirror. And the mirror is the heart and the sin is the dot. Okay? If you splash water on the mirror in the bathroom, one splash will not make you see your total face. Two will make it less and more will make it difficult. And therefore you need to wipe away the mist, okay? Or the water from the mirror to see yourself properly. So your heart, in order to be connected to Allah properly, you need to remove the sins. And every time you sin, the sin is a dot in the heart. And every time you do a good deed, it will wipe that dot. Keep wiping that mirror of the heart. Shine it. And therefore, we always say to every human being, you have permission from the Quran and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that you can make as much as you want from istighfar and salawat for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Just like in shopping, the thing that we will never stop buying, okay, is washing soap, all right, and something to dry ourselves or our dishes with, the towels that we have. We need to wash and then wipe to dry. So the istighfar is washing the heart and the salawat is shining your heart. This is what we need to do. Every one of you in the morning must repeat istighfar a hundred times and salawat a hundred times. This is minimum. And I promise you by Allah, I know people in this city, a busy city, people are very busy, you can all tell me we are so busy, but they do too much istighfar and salawat. I know a brother, every day he does istighfar 10,000 times. And does salawat for the Prophet a 100,000 times. And if each one is judged by 10 good deeds, that's beautiful. So if he does 10,000 istighfar, Allah will wipe 10,000 bad deeds. Nobody commit 10,000 bad deeds every day. Astaghfirullah Azim, unless they are shaitan. <laughs> okay? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write to them in their books for every istighfar they made, 10 good deeds. That is 100,000 good deeds. And if he loves them, he will multiply it by 700 times. And if he really loves them, without count. Without count. بغير حساب. Allah said in the Quran. And then when they do, you do salawat, Every salawat for the Prophet, the Prophet said, Allah will write it as ten times. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. It is written in my book now, as I said it ten times. And everyone will receive ten good deeds. So one salawat will receive a hundred good deeds. It can be multiplied by seven hundred or an infinite number. This brother does a hundred thousand every day. That is ten million good deeds. Definitely, for sure. Could be multiplied by seven hundred. Mathematically, that is too much. <laughs> and if it without count, Allahu Akbar. And therefore, keep doing. <laughs> One thing I always say to my brothers and sisters when I meet them, I say to them, look, the best thing the Prophet said is La ilaha illallah. And the hadith in Bukhari says, whosoever repeat every morning, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al mulk wa lahu al hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. A hundred times in his day, no one is better than them, only that one who did it or said it more than them. So if you wake up in the morning and you repeat it a hundred times and you think, oh, today on London there is nobody like me. <laughs> Rest assured there is somebody who read it 200 times. Rest assured there is somebody who read it 300 times. I'm telling you, there are people who read it thousands of times in London. I'm not talking about places whereby Mecca, Medina, there are people who are zikr in millions. There are millionaires <laughs> and billionaires go to Medina. Their faces are illuminating with light. Wallah. You see? That is what we need to do. I mean, we, we count our money and we are counting and looking and you see people going to the city doing money, calculating how much I, I have 10,000, 100,000, 10 million, a billionaire. And everybody wants to, to have more, more, more. What about the hereafter? You can do it this way and you can have a lot of good, inshallah, good deeds. Now, the istighfar is said in different formulas. The shortest formula for istighfar, astaghfirullah, just astaghfirullah. Okay? If you say, I want to do more, but when there is a longer istighfar, I can't do a lot. Just say, astaghfirullah. I seek forgiveness from Allah. Astaghfirullah, 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 astaghfirullah. Fine. 
You, and by the way, you don't have to seek forgiveness only when you make mistake. Just make it a habit to seek forgiveness just like that. Okay? Or you can say, Astaghfirullah al azim I seek forgiveness from Allah the Great. Or Astaghfirullah al azim Alladhi la ilaha illa huwa al hayya al qayyum wa atubu I seek forgiveness from Allah the living, the eternal. Okay? And I too repent unto him. But the master, Sayyidul Istighfar, the greatest word that you can say to repent unto Allah, Allahumma anta rabbi. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. Khalaqtani, you created me. Wa ana abduk, and I am your servant. Wa ala ahdik, committing myself to your covenant. Abu'u min imatika alayya. I do confess that you bestowed a lot of favors on me. Wa abu'u bi dhanbi. And I do confess my sin to you, not to a human being. We don't confess to human being, to Allah. Faghfir mm. So Allah, here I am before you, confessing my sin, forgive me. Innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa an, for there is none beside you who can forgive sins. Only you who can forgive my sins. So please, do find it, and do read it. The Prophet said, this is, a prescription. Every Muslim and Muslimah, wise enough, should read this istighfar in the morning three times, in the evening three times. Like tablets. But unfortunately today, when the doctor says, two after breakfast, two after lunch, two after dinner, we take it serious. Antibiotic must be taken until they're completed. I must do it. But the Prophet said, this is the antibiotic against your sins. Three times in the morning, three times in the evening. Yeah? Everyone sitting here, you heard it from me, go and find it. Sayyidul Istighfar is called. If you Google it, mashallah, Sheikh Google is good. He can give you. Sayyidul Istighfar is called. Find it, read it in the morning three times, in the evening three times, and you'll be forgiven, inshallah. Also, what forgives a sin? Charity. Be charitable. Every time you make a sin, give something in charity. You might say, I didn't get somebody to give. So, as I said before, get yourself a tin, a box, call it your poor man. Put it in the house. Every day put something. It takes away your illnesses. It takes away the difficulties, the dilemmas, the confusion in your life. Anything. The sickness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove it. Okay? Through charity. Doing good. Be good. Try your best to do good. Volunteer to help people who are old young children, volunteer in your area, okay, to support projects that are running. Fine, there's a lot of good work to be done. Volunteering is the way, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala linked faith to doing good. amanu wa amilu salih. Those who believe and did righteous good action. And this is something important. I'm going to finish by telling you a story, maybe many of you knows, but a, a, a beautiful story reported by the Prophet sallam of a man, in a long hadith of a man, okay, reported by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, who was a, an evil man. Very angry, very sad in his life, his way or the highway. If you disagree with him, he will kill you. And in his life, he killed 99 people. But he decided to repent. So he was told, go to this scholar in this area and you can repent with him. So he went to him and sat with him and discussed a lot of things. And then he said to him, will somebody like me be forgiven? What do you mean by like me? He said, I killed 99 people. The man said to him, no. Allah will not forgive somebody who kills. And you killed 99? Forget about it. You're not going to be forgiven. So he took his sword and said, well, forget about it. I forget about my... And he chopped his head and killed him. He became the hundredth person to be killed. He came out, he went still feeling there must be a way for repentance. Asking people, is there anybody else I can go and ask? They told him, there is another village not far away from here. You can go there, there is a scholar there you can ask and you might find forgiveness. So, he started traveling. After a short distance outside the city where he killed the hundredth man, he died. Once you die, by the way, the malaika will rush to come down to carry your soul. Who takes the soul? Israel, the angel of death. How? As it is described by the Prophet, when you are ready to die, five angels will be sent by him to work out your soul from your toes until it reaches okay, the tip of your throat here. When it reaches the throat, 
then it is ready for it to be taken and who takes it Israel he have a spear of light he will just go like this and he will pull it out and this when the person eyes turn why the eyes turn because he will see him and his sight is frightening the prophet sallam described this in the story of miraj once it is in the sphere it has to be taken to bariha to the creator who created it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay so allah will send either the angel of mercy if it is a good soul or the angel of punishment if it is a bad soul but both they come rushing to it unaware is it good or bad and then they will give their reasoning why they are coming and therefore the most important thing and i wish all of us will have to have a bad end is not good for us but to have a very good end by dying doing good or dying saying the word of la ilaha illallah there is none worthy to be worshipped but allah okay then you can benefit from. so this man when the angel came together subhanallah they were quarreling among themselves the angel of punishment says well he killed a hundred people he must be taken by us the angel of mercy said no his intention is to repent while they're discussing between themselves and allah knows better allah spoke to them and said look i see boss your point you're both right however i'm the judge measure the distance between him and where he came from and where he is going if he's nearer to the place where he came from the angel of punishment have the right to take him if he's nearer to the place where he's supposed to repent the angel of mercy should take him but allah in his mercy knew the man had a good intention but he did not have the right teacher to tell him that repentance can be accepted even for somebody who killed so many so immediately allah brought that village closer to him where he's supposed to repent and once the village came closer and they measured the angel of mercy took him this is to show that from the prophet sallam there is no limit for repentance there is nothing that you could do allah cannot accept your repentance for anything if you commit a shirk and you turn to allah that oh allah i repent from my mistake if you kill somebody allah will forgive you if you were bad to your parents and you repent from your sin allah will forgive you these are the big sins that i said early on and if you seriously turn to allah and say oh allah i made those mistakes and i'm promising you from today i will never do this you will definitely find allah most forgiving mm-hmm. most merciful mm-hmm. another thing i will say is that if you really want allah to make your life easy when it is difficult ask allah to forgive you because your sins might be the obstacle in your life seriously your sin could be that obstacle al hasan al bisri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu one of the great tabi'in okay the followers of the companions was sitting in bisra in iraq and was teaching in his mosque and a man came to him and complained that he has no children he said to him go and do istighfar he left another man came in and said to him my sustenance is very difficult nowadays i can't make ends meet he said go and do istighfar somebody else came to him and said to him i have difficulties in my life with my family my children he said go and do istighfar a man who was sitting and listening to all this he said to him ya hasan oh hasan everyone who came to you with a different problem you just ask them to go and make istighfar he said to him didn't you hear the quran saying Seek forgiveness from your Lord, for indeed He is forgiving. He will send rain down from the heaven to the earth. يُرْسِلِ الثَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدُدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ And He will give you children. Okay? Wealth. وَبَنِينَ And He will give you children. وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ بَنْهَارًا And in the hereafter, He will give you garden from beneath rivers will be flowing. Okay? Not just the reward for this dunya, but for the hereafter. So from this verse we know, if you need sustenance, seek forgiveness if you need children seek forgiveness okay if you need the reward of the hereafter seek forgiveness ask allah to forgive you repentance is there by the way the fairest sign big sign for the beginning of the day of judgment is the closure of the door of repentance the closure of the gate of repentance this is said to me by one of my teachers he says one of the greatest scholars who lived about 400 years ago 450 years ago he said when they questioned him about the signs for the day of judgment how many they are and can he explain in which order they will come because they are mentioned in the quran and the hadith okay he said tamuddu irun naduqu he abbreviated it in letters tamuddu irun naduqu he said ta 
I'm not going to talk about. But then he said, now people should know about it. The closure of the door of Tauba. Once Tauba is closed, that's it. Even if, because immediately after that, Mim is the coming of Mahdi alayhi salam. The guide to the people to the Iwa. Okay? Dal is the Jal. The appearance of the Jal in the land of Baytul Maqdis. Ain is the coming of Isa, son of Mary, alayhi salam. Ya is Yajuj and Majuj. The coming of Yagog and Magog, yeah? And they will destroy this earth. Arra is the raising of the Quran from the book that is written. These pages which I'm writing will be white. And the memory of man will be wiped out. Okay? Naduqu, noon, nar. A fire that will engulf this earth. Okay? They say, in fact, it comes from the heavens. Allah will wipe the earth. Okay? Uh, dal, okay? Dabba. An animal then will come, will speak just proper language which everybody on the earth, whatever tongue they speak, whatever language they possess, they will understand this animal. And he will be telling them, now you will learn. Your Lord has given you everything, but you have not shown gratitude. And the sign is coming. Okay? Uh, and the last thing is, Qaf. Zuhur al-Shams bil maqrib Okay, min al-Mashriq ila al-Maghrib. The sun, that morning, and instead of rising from the east, it will rise from the... That's it. It's done. Then the whole thing will be finished. There are other signs, the small signs, okay, but these are the big signs that is being said. So all of us need to understand Tawbah is important. Tawbah is there, inshallah. We have a lot of time, okay, to turn back to Allah and teach everybody we meet, say to our partners, our children, our parents, and remember, the most important thing for me, if you are sitting here, your parents are alive, please make peace with your parents. I can't say it enough. My parents are dead. I thank Allah. They were good to me. And I thank Allah. He taught me to be good to them. Please be good to your parents. Because if your parents die, or one of them dies, and they are angry with you, what are you living for then? This is a sin Allah cannot forgive. What are you living for? If you are an non-Muslim, who came to Islam, or a person who did not know about it before, and your parents already died, and they are angry with you, repent to Allah. I hope, and I pray, He will accept it, because He didn't know. رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَخِذْنَا إِنَّ سِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَانَا Our Lord, do not punish us if we forget, or we make mistakes that are not deliberate. This is what I always believe in. So please, ask your mother, ask your father, be good to them, be nice to them, if they are there, go back home and ring them. It's so easy nowadays. In my days, when my mother was alive, the best thing I could do, okay, is to ring. And in my days, if I don't have a telephone at home, I have to go and find the coin box outside. And the coin box, sometimes you go, it is full of money or it's broken. It's difficult. Nowadays, everybody is carrying a mobile in his pocket. Okay? So please ring your parents, talk to them, be good to them, be kind to them. And if, inshallah, Allah forgive our sin, it will be not just good for us, for the children that we have, and for the future of our descendants, inshallah. Anybody who have any question, you can ask me, inshallah. And I'm sorry if I delayed you, it's quite long. Anybody have a question? Yes? I know a man for 20 years, and uh, his son got married, he didn't invite me. What would you say to us? You forgive them, Allah. You <laughs> forgive them. Uh, because the person absolutely unaware of what you said because really he thought of everything and he did everything and I thought I invited everybody please forgive me please I don't want it to be upset with me because you were one of the most important people I promise you because he is like a son to you that's what I will say alright am I forgiven yes alhamdulillah <laughs> you are all witnesses <laughs> yeah anybody else with a question yes um, you know you talked about Nadam, mm. regretting. Regretting. Say there's a sin, mentally, just very mentally, you regret it. But not really in your heart, you just know oh, this is not good. Like you miss Fajr, or you know it's not good, but not really feeling regretful in your heart, from emotionally. How do you move from, how do you really regret something to make it a complete total? They say regret, really it's true regret when your heart is feeling the pain. 
When you feel the pain, alam al-qalb is a sign that the pain of the heart, the sign of true regret from the person. You feel absolutely terrible. Like if there is somebody whom you love very much and you hear them, you can't sleep at night. And you keep begging them, please forgive me. That's the way wherein you are turning to Allah. If it hurts in the heart, that means you, there is regret. That's the only sign. But if you don't regret, but you know you should regret, how? Oh, yeah, you are asking, how can we regret? Exactly. Mm, that's, that's a big question. <laughs> how, how are you going to teach yourself to regret? Is by making sure that what you are missing, and you're supposed to regret by missing, like your salah, is you take that serious. In what sense? I'm going to give you a very simple thing. People say to me, look, I find it difficult to wake up for Fajr. I promise you, I might. If that same person have an interview which is very important, have an assignment which is very important, or just having fun traveling, their flight is 4 o'clock to go to the Bahamas with their friends, they will wake up. Because they bought the ticket, they paid the money, they will make sure they will wake up. I know some of the brothers, they will have six, seven okay, in their room, alarms. They will tell their mother, they will tell their fathers, and they say, but I wake you, don't have, just take me and shake me. Okay, when I was young, one of my friends said to me, look, I can't wake up for Fajr. I said, but you're not serious. I said, I'm serious. I said to him, what do you mean? We call you, we don't wake up. He said, I am giving you the right to wake me up. I said to him, I need to take you from your bed, stand you up. And then what can I do? He said, slap me. I said to him, well done. You gave me a very good reason to wake you up. <laughs> Next morning, when I said his name, I'm not going to say his name, he just stood up, yes, on his feet to the bathroom. Because he knew that was serious. He gave me permission. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay? So, so take it seriously. Make sure that you have the right tools to wake you up. Okay? The very thing I will say to somebody who is finding it difficult to wake up for Fajr, and now winter is coming Fajr, is very easy. The night is too long. In fact, I, I find it boring in England to sleep so long. <laughs> seriously, it's really boring. The night in this country... It's too long. And now, I mean, fasting in winter, it's a joke. <laughs> you have a, an early breakfast, and an, a late breakfast, and an early lunch. I mean, half past six, you stop eating. What is this? Or six o'clock in the morning. I have my breakfast every day that time. And then, before four o'clock soon, inshallah, it will be breaking your fast. <laughs> so a lot of people cheat. Uh, they, 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 they don't fast repaying their fast they wait until December comes <laughs> I had a lot of my friends in the middle, from the Middle East where it is hot and difficult they come and repay their rich brothers they come and repay their missing fast in England yeah they come in December I said this is cheating yeah we have got a balance here Allah is just we have got winter and summer in the summer the day is long you had it this summer that passed so Allah is balanced. So in the Middle East, it's always the same, 13 hours, 14 hours of fasting. Here we have 18 hours in the summer and about less than 12 hours, maybe 8 hours in the winter. So there's a balance. When you add them together, divide it, it's the same average. Yeah. So we need to be, just told, you need to tell people to wake you up, make, make the right preparation for waking up. But one of the things that wake, wake you up, number one, is to be clean before you sleep. Yeah, if you are sweaty, if you are not clean, go and have a shower. Sleep with tahara, sleep with wudu. Begin your sleep by reciting some Quran. The best Quran to recite before you sleep is Surah Al Mulk. Okay, your barista, if you die in that night, it will come and defend you that the angel of punishment in the grave will not question you. When you are raised in the day of judgment and the malaika are taking you for your hisab, your judgment. It will stand before Allah and say, Oh Allah, you are about to judge this servant. But before he died, he read me. Can you retrieve him from the hellfire? And Allah could retrieve them, you. Allah can forgive you. So what a beautiful story to read. Then, you should lie to your right. By putting your right palm under your head and putting your right foot over your left foot like that. Okay? Like the baby of lying in the womb. Okay? For few. And in this... You seek forgiveness from Allah and you ask Allah to forgive what the wrong you did against his people and if anybody wrong you, ask Allah to forgive them. Don't have any burden with you. To wake up, there are two areas of the Quran you could read to wake you up. 
I promise you by Allah it will wake you up. Either you recite the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay? This is taught to me by a good man, a wise man. said to me, you recite لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ This is the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. You read those two verses and ask Allah to write it in the book. Huh? No, that, that's another one. But this Surah Al-Baqarah, you ask Allah to write this in the book of Uwais Al-Qarani. Uwais Al-Qarani, you know him. Okay, the pious Yemeni man whom the Prophet said, if you meet him to the companion and ask, Allah, ask him to ask Allah to forgive you, Allah will forgive you. No, no, no. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ No, 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 no. Al-Baqarah. No, no, sorry. Aman al-Rasulu. Aman al-Rasulu. I'm sorry, I'm making a mistake. I'm confused. May Allah remove it. Okay? Aman al-Rasulu. Aman al-Rasulu. Aman al-Rasulu. Aman al-Rasulu. Aman al-Rasulu. The last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. If you ask Allah to write it in the book of Uwais al-Qarani and say the time you want to wake up. You will wake up. Insha'Allah, bi-idhni Allah ta'ala you'll wake up. Or you recite Aywaha. The end of Surah Al-Kahf. وَلَّوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَةَ رَبِّي لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَدَكَ وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدَ Okay? Recite. Yeah? Yeah, it's very good. The end of Surah Al-Kahf. The last two verses of Surah Al-Kahf. You recite them and ask Allah to wake you up. Allah will wake you up. It is, it is really good. It's really good. So this is the way. But plus that, put an alarm or two alarms or three alarms. I have, I have a friend of mine who used to put one alarm and then when it rings, he used to take it open the window and throw it out. Tomorrow go and buy the alarm, another alarm. He said to me, my intention is to wake up, but when the alarm rings, I don't know what I'm doing. So I throw it out. I said to him, buy more. Don't put the alarm next to you so you just tap it and it stops. Put the alarm far away from you. One of the mashayikh of India said, in order for me to wake up, I grew my hair and made it long and then I tie it. When the time I want to wake up comes, okay, something pulls and I'm pulled from the hair. <laughs> it's hard. This is really hard. He said, there is no way I can sleep until I get up and stop what is pulling it down. I have to go physically there and stop whatever it is. So find a way. But to sleep and to say I find it hard to wake up for Fajr, no way. Especially if suddenly... Your friend said, tomorrow morning we are going to Paris for a day and you wake up early and everything is done. <laughs> That's not good. I, I know a lot of people, when it, there's an interview, there's a job I have to go to, and I, they rush. They will never. They go to their job in time because it is earning. What about the earning of the hereafter? No, don't. Anybody else with a question? Yes, my brother. Uh, in terms of sins, where do alcohol and homosexuality come into it? Oh. This is the nafs. Zina, homosexuality, this comes from the, from the desire of the nafs. This is, as I said, there are four areas, yeah? The first area is when you are trying to assume the position of Allah by being arrogant. That's, the second area, okay, is your nafs. These are the things to do with the, with the nafs. And the fourth area is the animal status, whereby, okay, you try to be like an animal, okay? And the fourth area is when you try to become like a beast, okay? Wanting to possess not wanting to share okay so this is come in the nafs yeah anybody else yes are there any signs of the doors of October being closed the small signs they say the small signs you need to look for uh, uh, Imad is asking is there any signs before the door of October is closed so that we know it's coming nearer the small sign the prophet says when Jibreel alayhi salam asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi inform me about the hour. He says, Man anha bi alam min The one who's being questioned about it is not more informed than the one who's questioning. But then he mentioned the signs. Okay? And talidul amatu rabbataha. When the slave woman gave birth to her master, it's already happened. Okay? When women were taken as slaves in palaces in the past. And then the king or whatever, the prince will have a child, but the child will not be put in the quarter of the slaves, will be taken to the palace because it is his son. Many of them, there are many names like that. Even today, there is one like that, but I'm not going to say. Okay. Um, actually, I've got a uh, for those uh, who say they are atheists, or uh, for instance, I believe they are atheists because they haven't had the, they haven't had the right teacher. Okay. 
And so uh, maybe uh, the intention is not to be atheist, but uh, it's just because uh, also our society makes it uh, yeah. difficult. Okay. So how uh, would you put those people in the perspective? Because obviously... That Absolutely. Is this is a very good question, my brother. Very, very good question. You, you, know, you know, a person who did not make their mind because they're not aware, they don't yeah. know, yeah. their judgment is with Allah. Because they don't know. I can't get them. But if somebody says, look, there is no God. I don't really believe in God because I am sure there is no God. That somebody that means he's sure, he knows. But if somebody said, I'm not sure, convince me there is a God. Yeah. And until you convince me, I don't know. This is my position. This kind of person, it's fine. You need to you need to find ways. As I said, there is no teacher, they have no information, there's nobody showing them the good example. It's true. Or they, they, they would be in touch uh, with the right people, or, or maybe once in their life, or more than once in their life, they have the opportunity. But they, uh, because of um, like of um, uh, influence of the like nowadays the media, or, yeah, yeah. So they they kind of they. I know that uh, there are no excuses, but. No, 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 no. You know, no, 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 no. I, 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 I tell you, I tell you. No, no, no. It, today, 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 to me, anybody who says, for example, I need to be convinced because I'm not convinced, fine, because that means a person is looking, is searching, until he finds the truth. Because to be honest with you, today the truth is confused. Whom do you believe? Whom do you listen to? There is too much going on. Okay, and therefore. I will not judge people. I will never be a judge to stand and say, this person is going to the hellfire, this person is going to heaven. I don't know where I'm going. On. My only hope that Allah, my Lord, will shower me with mercy and forgive my sins. This is what I hope. Really. I have no desire in judging anybody. And wallahi, my brother, in my heart, I pray that Allah will guide those who are looking for him. I pray all the time. Okay? And therefore, one of my prayers that I pray every day, I thought, Allahumma hadini wa hadibi. Oh Allah, guide me and make me a source of guidance for others. Allahumma hadini wa hadibi. Because I don't know. I need to be guided, but I need to be a source of guidance because I might be misguiding people. I don't want to misguide people. And therefore, I feel, for all of you who are learning knowledge, don't make it difficult. Don't take knowledge literally. Don't say to people, that's it, there is no way. Like this man who's being okay, told there is no forgiveness, so he killed a man who's... We shouldn't be like that. Leave people to Allah. Nobody is born... Okay? Knowledgeable. Or nobody is born, he must believe in Allah or he will die. You have a choice. Life is by choice. You choose. However, the choice for the hereafter begins here. It's up to us what choice we make. Good and evil is upon our choice. If I choose to steal because I want to live, it's my choice. If I choose to go and get a job to earn my living, it's my choice. If I choose to have a job, but then in my job I cheat and I lie and deceive, it's my choice. If I chose to work in a hard job and earn very little, but being honest and sincere, it's my choice. But then you tell me, which is which? To work in a job that is very hard, and to earn little money from it, but with sincerity and honesty, that's a good thing. Everybody will tell you. Anybody from any culture, from any, this is a very good person. Somebody who's working in a job and cheating and deceiving to get more money, anybody will tell you, oh, this is bad. This person should be sacked from the job because he's deceiving his employer. Do you understand? So there is right and there is wrong. So you choose. There is absolute total freedom in choice. Allah is very, very generous in that. You choose. But for those amongst us who believe in Allah, and we know that we sin, and we are sinners, created to sin, we should remember one thing. Allah said in the Quran clearly, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفُرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Say to them, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, O my servants, okay, who have committed a lot of sins, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Why? For indeed Allah forgive all sins. Allah will forgive all sins. You know, although it is said there are sins that Allah will not leave, which are the sins between you and the human being, 
So if the human being does not forgive you, Allah will do the justice in the day of judgment. But in the day of judgment, Allah could choose to forgive you himself. There is an example of this in the Sunnah when the Prophet said, A man will come before Allah. And Allah will say to him, Look, my servant, I am pleased with you. You have done a lot of good. You are, mashallah, today <laughs> you're going to heaven. Okay? However, that person there, I love, I like, but he wronged you. Would you forgive them? Oh, no, 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 I'll not forgive them. Look at the human being. I will not forgive them, my Lord. He knows he's going to heaven. Allah is pleased with him. But Allah loves somebody else, and Allah wants them to go to heaven. But Allah cannot let them go to heaven because they wrong this person. Allah will say, would you forgive them? I said, no. So what Allah does, Allah will say, okay, look there. And the person will be in awe, looking at what he's saying. What do you think? Oh my God, beautiful. How would you feel if I give you that in return of forgiveness to him? Yes, I will do. Who is forgiving Allah? Because Allah is compensating. Do you understand? Allah is can forgive all sins. Allah is generous. Allah, I love Allah very much because without him, there'll be chaos on this earth. But because of him, with all the difficulties you see, with all the troubles, those whom you see in the biggest difficulties and trouble, they're the closest to him. If you watch the television today and you see mothers crying for the children killed in Syria, you see parents who are trying to make ends meet in cities in Somalia and they just, just want to live. They're not being given a chance to live. You look at today, people, okay, in, 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 in Bangladesh, they're trying to come because they have their home that's been buried, uh, burnt, and they cannot be allowed, and in their land they're being tortured. And they're sitting there so happy. These people are Allah's people. If we can help them, we should help them. But literally, Allah is helping them inside. Inside, there is something beautiful in them. Allah is looking after them, I promise you. And they will be compensated highly. You see? Don't look at them and say, oh, where is the justice? Don't be naive. There is justice. If you want to ask that question, in your own home, okay? Are you just with your children? Are you just with your wife or husband? Are you just with your neighbors? Well, in most of the time, I'm not just. You see? So you can't ask that question just like that. Allah is just. There's no doubt about it. There's justice. We make mistakes and that injustice take place, but we should try to avoid the mistakes. And if we fall into them, we still need to seek forgiveness in Allah. Actually, I always thought about that. I mean, I always, in, re in reality, I always thought about that. But uh, sometimes from uh, uh, the way people act, uh, like they can be Muslim or Christian, yeah. religious people, you know, they don't make you think that. They make you think that, oh, no, you know, they, you know they're going to hell or something. No. Like you know, it's just because uh, you're confused. If anybody says to you, oh, my brother, these brothers who are suffering now in Syria or suffering in, in Somalia or those people uh, in Nainamar or that country, what is it called? Burma. Burma. Huh? Burma, Burma. I know the old name, Burma. Okay? Oh, they are wicked. That's why they are punished. They don't know what they are talking about. Who are they? To make judgment. Who are they? I will never listen. This is the ignorance. This is real ignorance. And it's, it's sad. It's really sad. People don't understand. They don't appreciate and the mercy of Allah. These people are simple people. The test is not really just for them. It's for us as well. What are we doing? When I look at people who are looking after animals, there are organizations set up by people to save nature. Wow! What a beautiful way to save humanity, to save children. Who gave them the inspiration to do this? Allah, because he put mercy in their hearts. They are fighting for rights for people or animals that cannot fight for themselves. You see? And there are people who are fighting for fish in the ocean. Amazing, really. It makes me... Some people who are ignorant say, oh, these ignorant people, they're wasting money. Well, you will not be able to eat fish. That tuna you love very much, if it's all taken by the Chinese and the Japanese, there will only be tuna in the sea. But they are doing a good job. Allah created them and gave them this responsibility, not you. So you don't talk about them. Leave them alone. You see? Yes, my sister. Mm. But, um, what do you think about these people, uh, what would you say, people who are like um, joining this cause for um, uh, saving the planet, saving the tiger in uh, Amazonia, not even capable of like um, uh, saving the children, for example, in Syria or in uh, Palestine? Or, I'm just talking about uh, uh, 
you fax, like you have like an email and they're not, not interested in that. Even though there's killings, and so you know that you can do something, you can pay some money, but you choose to not join this cause, but you are joining this cause of uh, this tiger who are and it's, uh, dying in somewhere in, in the jungles of India. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you're not, I mean, this person is not even touched by what's going on in Syria, for example. Mm. She can put a little bit of money to give them toys, for example, to these kids. I mean, I know I like this for merciful and to forgive, but I, I don't understand that. No, but let me tell you, there is a verse in the Quran to answer you. Allah said, Kullun, okay? The meaning of the verse, okay? Everyone is created for something that will be easy for them to carry in their life. Okay, and the Prophet said it in the hadith, Kullum lima Everyone will find it easy to that which Allah has made them like or follow or what Allah has made them, okay, find easy in their life to carry out. So, some of us love to climb mountains. Okay, and they are traveling in the mountain and they see a plant that is been destroyed or uh, wood that had been cut and they feel sad so they started saving that somebody who traveled to India because they love to go to India and go to the jungle and then see the lions are being okay destroyed or go to Africa I remember once okay I was coming from my country this is in the early 80s I think and there is a man sitting next to me in the plane who came from another African country and he was so angry that uh, the rhinos are being killed I have never seen a rhino only in the zoo. So I saw this man. I said, so I asked, we had to ask him. He said, I go to Ma'arif Kenya or Zaire to go and watch them. And he, he loves them. So he told me when he went back to England, he's going to start a charity to save them. And I was shocked. A year later, so it was a charity. Now there's a charity here. That man, I have never met him again. But I commend him. Seriously. It's not bad. You have been given a chance to uh, serve something. All of us have to be serving. So if somebody is doing something, it's not bad. I mean, we shouldn't differentiate between the animals or the trees or the human. The human, of course, are higher. But we should allow people to do where their heart is. We shouldn't stop them. We shouldn't discourage them. Because at the end of the day, there is too many of us. The problem is, there are too many who are idle doing nothing. They are not even working to save their own self. Forget about saving people dying in Syria or saving the animal or the rhino. So, so we need to encourage those who are doing nothing to choose something to do. My my aim in England is everybody I come across will learn that volunteering to do something is good for you. Mm-hmm. Sitting doing nothing is bad for you. Sitting playing computer games, sitting in a club somewhere, in a library, in a park, enjoying yourself, having a picnic, and the world is dying around you, that is bad. I want everybody to be doing something. Encourage people to volunteer everywhere. Save somebody. Save your neighbor who cannot do shopping. Save the old people in the area whereby children come and throw stones in there. Yeah? Be, be the cause for them. Because there are children in some neighborhood, they just want to disturb the old people. They, they find it funny, knocking their doors and running, and the old people coming out, and then they run away laughing. I will fight for them. What is this? That's a cause. But, of course, saving people is important. But if they are not seeing it, I will encourage those who are not doing anything towards my cause. They are encouraging for their cause. I will encourage for my cause. My cause is humanity. I will work for humanity. My cause is animal. The Prophet ﷺ gave us two stories about two people. One man, one woman. One man who gave water to a dog that is dying. And in that process, he ruined his shoe, which is brand new. He didn't care. The Prophet said, this man will go to heaven. And a woman who brought a kitten, put it in a cage, and starved it to death to see how this kitten will die. The Prophet said, she will go to the hellfire. Somebody said to him, even the animal, Ya Rasulullah, could take you to heaven or hell. He said, even the animal. Hat al So it is important. We should not neglect that. Having the right, يعني, I always tell people when I came here, I used to hear this statement said in television and advertisement, I think, I love to hug a tree. So I said, what a beautiful thing. These people who love to save the jungle. And, ah, I would love to hug a tree too. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. In your, uh, people are saving South America. And you are cutting the trees, my brother. <laughs> I know, not you. No, no. Just joking. <laughs>
Schneider, which I joined the course, obviously, I'm very touched about the environment. And yeah, yeah. Whether it was like too, I don't know. Mm. I, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. No, I know, I know, I'm not judging. I know, I, I know, I know. Some people don't take your uh, يعني, line of thinking to the way you want them to take it. But the way is to persuade people, okay, to encourage people. My way, the way I was brought up, I was never told off about anything. I was always encouraged or discouraged. Encouraged by giving me the example, by example. Discouraged by showing me how this is not good for you, removed away from it, but told off or shouted at me, I don't know how, who you are and what happened to you in your life, but my mother, my father never shouted at me or told me off. I do the wrong, and they just sit me down and they just talk about something else. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and, 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 and then I'm looking at them and saying, what's going on? And they, they don't. يعني, if my father told me not to do something and I did it, he will just say, come. And I thought maybe he's going to shout at me, tell me off. And then he will say, can you go and do this for me? I'll go do this. And then he'll take me away. I'll go and visit a friend with him. We sit down. We listen to somebody who's singing or used to love this kind of thing. That's it. And he forget about it. You know what happened? That made me regret what I did. Because he was an old man. And I said to myself, what? Look at the way he's treating me. And he joked with me. He laughed with me. And I know he was watching what I did and he knew it was wrong. You see? But that made me the way I am. And I don't, I don't, I don't judge people. I don't, I have my children, you know them, they're old enough. I never, I never shout at them, I never tell them, wow, this is haram, this is wrong, you shouldn't do that. No, no. But I show them by example. If I don't like something, I remove them from it. And if I like something, I join them in it. Okay, and then that's the way they can. But to encourage and discourage is the way of the prophets, the good people. But the way of shouting and screaming and, no, no, no. Not, it's not the way they never do that. You never read the prophet standing up screaming at his people, telling them off. No, no, they don't do that. Anybody else? Yes, sister. Um, um, I, in a year and years ago, I used to have a friend, um, very religious friend, and regards to being you know into humanitarian or helping people, she'd say, um, No, 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 it's all haram, it's all dunya, dunya, dunya. We must just sit and pray. Uh, you know this is this is no no this is a sign this is a sign of somebody who is ignorant of the knowledge that will eliminate this from them this understanding it is there in Islam it is there in the Quran it is there in the Sunnah there is nothing okay I will say to you but we must help we must support absolutely there is no doubt about it anybody who says that they don't know. but if they look deeply into the example of Rasulullah they will find it there. So pray for him, whoever it is or she is. May Allah allow them to see that. But to say there is nothing you should do but just sit down and pray. And if you do something, it's haram. No, it's not haram. How could it be haram? When the Prophet ﷺ says saving an animal could take you to heaven or destroying an animal that is innocent, just killing them for the sake of killing will take you to hell. And it's hadith of the Prophet is sahih. You see? And these animals are created for a purpose. It's also a I'm vegetarian. And that's also haram. <laughs> no, 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 it's not haram. To be a vegetarian is not haram. No, 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 no. As long, as long as you don't say, you don't say to yourself, meat is haram for me. Don't make it haram. Say, meat is halal. But I don't like, like eating. The Prophet ﷺ, whatever is put before him, okay, either he like it or dislike it, and he will eat it. But he will never say something bad about something to eat. Or say it is haram when it is halal. No, because Allah taught him not to say that. So you are a vegetarian. What's wrong with you? Vegetarianism, in fact, to me, is almost the life of the person who wants to cleanse their soul. Because by eating a lot of meat, you tend okay, to be a little bit harder and harsher in your life. Okay? I like meat and I eat meat, but if I look at the life of Prophet, he ate very little meat. Prophet, for three months sometimes, there is no fire lit in his house. Here I am, fire is lit in my house many times a day. Here I am every day, I'm having chicken, having meat, I'm having whatever. Do we only have to have meat? Do we only have to have fish? One man was asked, one scholar called Sheikh Sha'rawi, the cream of my group in my time, when we were doing our 
studied in Britain here in the late 70s, came together in Central Mosque and he was going to Canada, six hours he was in Heathrow, we brought him from there, we put him down and I tell you the mosque was full. The majority of the people listening to him were researchers from Egypt, Sudan, they're all doing their research. Many of them are very famous men in the Middle East now. And they were asking him, look, we are living in England, there is no halal meat, what shall we do? Yes, okay. Uh, I live Ma'arif, in this little village outside Peterborough, because I'm in Peterborough University, but there is no halal shop, what shall I do? Okay. After they all asked him, most of the question about halal meat, he said, excuse me, the, our people are waiting for you to come and lead them. We sent you for knowledge. Are you only worried about your stomachs? <laughs> and there is nothing to eat but meat? There is fish. There is lentils, by the way. <laughs> the Jews said to Allah, please, the meat that you bring from the heaven we don't want. Can you send that back to Egypt? Why? Because we want the fool, al adas for basal. <laughs> we want the lentils. Okay? Of Egypt. We want the foam. Okay? We want the onions and we want the okay, garlic. Allah said, Atastabdiluna alladhi huwa adna billadhi huwa khair. You change that which is high with this which is low. That means the food of the heaven is higher. And the food of the heaven was barbecued meat. Bear meat. So the best food, when you somebody invites you, say, are you barbecuing for me chicken? Or any bird? You know, here in this country, they kill those wild bears. What do you call them? Presents. Yeah, very expensive. That's the best. <laughs> That's the best. That's the food of heaven. Absolutely. When people say, oh, these people go out hunting, killing, what's well, nothing wrong with it? When I was young, the best meal we have is when my elders will go out and hunt the best hubar, we call it hubar, beautiful bear. I promise you the best meat you eat. They bring it, they clean it, they just barbecue it. No salt, no pepper, nothing. You eat it, it's the best food. But you take it, put it in the sauce, and you put onion and garlic and water, you ruin it. That's not. <laughs> That's not food. <laughs> Allah said the best food is barbecued meat. And the best barbecued meat is that which is flying. Yeah? You understand? But if you don't eat it, fine. That's what's wrong with that. <laughs> According to my dad, <laughs> the only of May Allah bless you, my brother. Eid Mubarak to you. Thank you for your message. May Allah bless you. You know, you remind me of my dad, my only authority. Yeah, my dad always <laughs> used to say to my mother, yani he, he will not tell her off, but he will say, I'm a broker, blessed one. I bought you the meat, you ruined it. <laughs> 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 I, well, I, I always, I, when I say this, I see his face, he was nice. He never, he never questioned, he never asked. But he was like, Mabruka, blessed one. I brought you the meat. Yes, Hajj, you call him Hajj. What's the problem? You ruined it. Because she made the casserole or a curry. What is this? <laughs> so he used to take me in the morning and he will buy two sets of meat. One for her to spoil. <laughs> 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 one, one for her to treat us. <laughs> he never eat only barbecued meat. And he will cut it very small. I don't know where he got this from. But believe me, he was fit. When my brothers used to say to me, don't eat a lot of meat, it will give you gout and give you this and that. He said to me, don't listen to them. Look at the jungle. Which are the f animals that are big and fat? And which are that which are agile and slim? He said to me, all meat eaters are strong. The cheetahs and the lion, okay? All of them. Even the foxes. Although they are small, but they are strong. But when you look at the giraffes and the buffaloes and the cows, and they're big. You see, they eat a lot. The elephants. They, but they, what they eat, they eat grass. It doesn't mean that they shouldn't. <laughs> doesn't mean they shouldn't eat grass. But my, this, is my, this is the logic of my dad. My dad said, and subhanAllah, when I came to England, I realized there is a man who was doing a diet by only eating meat. Yeah? There is a diet like that, yeah? Uh, clever man. He's, my dad will love him. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, du'as inshallah. Anybody else with anything? We'll make du'a now. Yes, Ayman, assalamu alaikum. I am so sorry to hear your loss. Uh, may Allah bless her soul. May Allah raise her to the high, loftiest place in paradise. Uh, she lost her daughter. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her.
they really like this as well. <laughs> and uh, we had an argument. And it was only a month later I realized, hang on a minute, Allah chose her sister to be Muslim. So who am I to choose her sister? Allah. Her? Oh, no. So I phoned her, I said, please forgive me. Of course, she knew me from when we were children. Mm. And she said, ha, ah, you're asking me for forgiveness? <laughs> you know, like, the person I know doesn't do that. So the next day I phoned her again, I said, can you forgive me? And every day I phoned her until she realized I meant it. I said, look, I realized I can't choose you. Uh, your sister over you and what I realize about people and forgiveness is that we don't want to forgive anybody but in the day of judgment we're going to be begging for forgiveness absolutely and you know for me you know what happened with my daughter mm. and I forgive him because who knows maybe one day he's going to be Muslim absolutely you know and I just think really we need to look at ourselves and instead of saying we don't forgive or we're condemning people we need to forgive more yeah ourselves. Yeah, clearly, forgiveness is the best thing. Please don't sleep at night in your bed condemning people. Uh, please, 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 I beg you, don't you ever raise your hand and pray against somebody. Because the one who throws one pebble should not complain when many are thrown at him. Okay? There are many people who make a lot of worship, but a lot of it is to fight other people. They make vicar asking somebody came to me and said to me I'm reading these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay ya mumitu ya qaharu ya mumitu this is powerful or you who take away life or you who will destroy not just reading them as names of Allah to remember Allah as the powerful but asking Allah by those names to destroy people who oh, I have a lot of enemies I said to him astaghfirullah we don't do that we don't raise our hand and pray against people. When we raise our hand, we ask Allah mercy, forgiveness, and then we ask Allah to forgive those whom we have wronged. And we ask Allah to forgive those who have wronged me or wronged you. Anybody who wronged me, I forgive them. I don't want to go to bed carrying any responsibility. My heart should be clear, pure for Allah's sake. Please, this is what you should do. It's my advice to you. Why should you burden yourself? You know, subhanAllah, when you are angry with somebody, they are sitting in their home, sleeping comfortably, laughing, and you are carrying all that pain. <laughs> what for? What for? And sitting there angry. I'm angry. I'm annoyed. They say, what for? You, who is suffering? You. <laughs> you are suffering. They are not suffering. So clean your heart. All right? May Allah give us tawfiq. Let us pray. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله مجريه ومرساه إن ربي لغفور رحيم بسم الله وبالله ومن الله وعلى الله وفي الله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام انظر اللهم إلينا بعين الرحمة وتب علينا طبة النصوح وأصلح اللهم من الجسد والقلب والروح طهر اللهم ألسنتنا من الكذب وقلوبنا من النفاق وأعمالنا من الرياء وأفصارنا من الخيانة فإنك تعلم خائنة العين وتقف الصدور ربنا آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها فإنك أنت خير من زكاها ربنا طهر ألسنتنا من الكذب ربنا طهر ألسنتنا من الكذب يا ربنا طهر ألسنتنا من الكذب وقلوبنا من النفاق وأعمالنا من الرياء وأبصارنا من الخيانة فإنك تعلم خائنة العين وتقف الصدور رب اغفر ورحم وأنت خير الراحمين غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير رب اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمشايخنا ولمن علمنا ولمن له حق علينا وللسائل والمحروم ولكافة المسلمين أجمعين رب يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا حي يا قيوم يا رفع الدرجات يا ذي العرش لا إله إلا أنت ربنا رضينا بك ربا وبالإسلام دينا ومحمد النبي ورسولا اللهم لا مانع لما عطيت ولا معطينا ما نعت ولا رد لما قضيت ولا ينفع ذا جد منك جد ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك يا رب العالمين أو الله we ask you to bless Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family and all the prophets and all the righteous people. Oh Allah, we ask you in this moment of time to forgive all our sins, that which we did deliberately, no one can forgive but yourself, that which we did with neglect or without knowing what we are doing, forgive our sin, ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, we ask you that we are repenting to you totally, accept our repentance. Oh Allah, make us among those who are steadfast in every day seeking repentance unto you. Asking your forgiveness, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, make us among those who are steadfast in their prayer. Make us among those people who are always doing the righteous good action. Guide us and allow people to be guided through that which we say or we do. Oh Allah, I ask of you to forgive all those people whom we have wronged. Oh Allah, anybody who 
we have wrong today or before today forgive our <laughs> sins ya rabbal alamin towards them and anybody who have wronged us anybody who have done any mistakes against us oh allah we forgive them we ask of you to change their sins to good deeds ya rabbal alamin to guide us and to guide them oh allah there are many people around the world who are suffering they are suffering and they are a test for us as this test is for them too but it is mainly for us, Ya Kareem. So show us mercy to see their suffering and be able to show them mercy by helping them. Those who are walking barefooted, O oh Allah, we ask of you to cover their feet and allow us to help them with that. O oh Allah, there are those who are thirsty and hungry. Water them and feed them and allow us to be among those who will do that for them. O oh Allah, there are those who are shelterless. Shelter them and allow us to be among those who will shelter them, Ya Kareem. O oh Allah, there are those people who are sick. We ask of you to heal them and allow us to be among those who will visit them so we can find you with them. O oh Allah, there are those who are orphaned. Allow us to be among those who will show mercy to them even by meeting them and wiping their head. O oh Allah, or showing them tenderness and love and care or support them and help them by all means, Ya Kareem. O oh Allah, there are those people who are oppressed. Remove their oppression. O oh Allah, there are those people who are in debt. O oh Allah, help them to pay their debt. O oh Allah, there are those people who are finding it not easy, they are lazy, or they are unable to carry out their duties. Make it easy for them. Remove their laziness and their inability and give them to fear and success to do that which you have commanded them to do. O oh Allah, there are those who are sad. Remove their sadness. O oh Allah, there are those who are depressed. And it is the highest disease today in the world. Remove their depression, Ya Rabbil Alameen. O oh Allah, I ask of you, to make it easy for brothers and sisters to live at home in peace, between partners in marriage to have peace, between neighborhood people to be living in peace, and to bring peace into the world. Oh Allah, Islam is not the peace, but Islam is the way to you the peace. For Ya Rabbana Anta Salam, O Allah, you are the peace, and from you comes to us peace. O oh Allah, allow us to live in this world in peace. And when we return to you, allow us to return to you in peace. And resurrect us among the people of peace and allow us to dwell and enter the garden, your garden of peace. Oh Allah, we ask of you, when you allow us to enter it, you will greet us with your greeting of peace. For indeed you said, Tahiyatahum yawma alqawnahu salam. His greeting, subhanahu wa ta'ala, or your greeting for them will be peace. Oh Allah, we ask of you to be among those people who will be striving towards peace and allowing us to show that peace to others, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I ask of you, O oh Allah, if there are many people or any people sitting with me today here who are having difficulties in their life, none can remove the difficulty but you remove their difficulties. O oh Allah, those who are married, allow them to live in peace with their partners. Give them tranquility, increase their love to one another, support them. If they have children, allow them to be raised to be pious good children. If they have no children, O oh Allah, allow them to have children and allow them to be pious good children. Those who are not married, Ya Allah, none can marry them but you. The good ones are for the good ones. Allow them to find the good partner that they will marry and allow them to have children, Ya Kareem. Oh Allah, I ask of you, for anybody who is seeking employment, sitting with me here, or anybody asking me that, may Allah allow them to have that employment. Oh Allah, allow them to have it, Ya Kareem. Employ them. Those who are seeking education, knowledge, allow them to have knowledge. Those who are seeking success in their education, allow them to succeed in their education. Those who are seeking... Ya Allah, anything from you to make their life easy, make it easy for them. Allahumma inni as'aluka li wa lahum wal husna wa ziyada ya kareem wal afu wal afiyah wal mu'afata daima fi ddeen wa dunya wal akhira bi rahmatika ya arhamu rahimin Oh Allah, we are living in neighborhoods. Sometimes we do not have time to talk to our neighbors or to do the good towards them. Oh Allah, if we annoy them or do any wrong against them, forgive our sins. For indeed for the neighbor there is a right. Oh Allah, we thank you for living in this land. Many of the people... Here in this land are coming from foreign land, welcomed by the people of this land, given shelter, jobs, medication, and a lot of things. Oh Allah, many times we say the wrong things against the people. Oh Allah, if we said anything wrong against them, forgive us, for we should show gratitude to you by being grateful to them. We thank you for allowing us to live in this land. We thank them for allowing us to live in this land. Oh Allah, oh Allah, I ask you to guide those who are not guided among them. And those who are guided, they strengthen them and allow them to have peace in this land, Ya Kareem. I ask you, O oh Allah, to bestow upon us mercy, to forgive our sin, to guide us into the straight path, to allow us to die with the last word that will be said by our tongues, La ilaha illallah, 
There is none worthy to be worshipped but you, Allah. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina. Wa thabbit aghdamana wa nsurna ala qawmi al-kafirin. Ya Rabbi hayi'i lana min amrina rashada. Waj'al ma'unataka al-husna lana madada. Bil-awliya bil-salihina bi-jam'ihim. Man jaa'ana al-Qur'an anhum murshida. Farrij bifadlika ilahi karbana. Ya khayran maddal anama lahu yada. Wa salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. Wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima. Subhana rabbika rabbil adata amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin al-fatiha. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina al-Sirat al-Mustaqim. Sirat al-Ladhin an'amta alayhim. Ghayr al-Maghdubi alayhim wa l-Dalin. Ameen. I just want to make a few announcements, please, before you leave. Announcement number one. I do a circle every Saturday in Krikulud Mosque. And I have been doing it since 1992. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Come in. Welcome. Come in. Since 1992. And uh, I used to do it initially, men and women. Then it became only men because it was becoming later and later and later and later until sometime we start 12 o'clock in the morning and then it finishes early hours of the morning 3 4 so please people were asking some of the men themselves there are those who have got used to it they travel from other cities to come and we finished two o'clock three o'clock in the morning now we tried many times to bring it earlier we couldn't but now i have a new system inshallah yesterday we started we're going to start at half past seven but to make it work this time i'm going to start uh, a circle just teaching the seerah of the Prophet <laughs> if you can make it next week Saturday inshallah every Saturday Kirkwood Mosque you can come to either Willisden Green Station and walk down Chichili Road and the uh, turning before the last before the main Kirkwood Broadway you turn left and then the first right which is uh, the road that's called Howard Road that's it Howard Road that's and the mosque is there the big church very clear okay <coughs> or you can come through Kilburn station yeah and take a bus down and you can come number 16 inshallah will bring you down if you come uh this will be from half past seven to half past eight okay quarter to nine and i will finish the seerah and then i will do my normal okay meditation we do salawat for the prophet sallam, and then we do dhikr those who want to leave they can leave those who want to stay they can stay but i am inshallah adamant i will finish by half past ten so that people can leave. I want the girls not to be stranded on a Saturday evening. They can't find buses. There are people in the street who are drunk and this and it's a big responsibility. As I said, and nisa and nisa and nisa. We should take good care. And I say to the brothers and sisters who come, if you have a lift, okay, take that lift. And if you have a place in your car, give somebody a lift. The one who have a vehicle to carry people should carry those who cannot be carried. Look where you are, bring people with you. So the Sira will start. I'm going to be teaching from different books, but mainly I'm going to concentrate from a Shifa and a the healing, talking about the Prophet and his prophethood. I'm going to talk about, inshallah, from the Ibn Hisham Sira, which is mainly talking about the Prophet Muhammad, the man, inshallah. So do come to that. And then we have applied to uh, somebody to come and teach us about finance for those who want to learn about their finance, for professionals who do their own returns of tax and they want to understand budgeting and this and that. Anybody who's interested, it's going to be on the 11th of November. We have not advertised it yet, but you can tell people who want to come. And uh, this is a very good, this is a way uh, a charitable organization is doing to teach people and through which charities like us, they can cover their costs by earning money from that. So please look into the website and talk to Sakina and Sadzan and inshallah to be advertised. My daughter Amina as well is involved with that and brother. Uh, where Sami is there. So it will be, inshallah, done. I've got a lot of volunteers here. It's good. It's going to be a very good course. The morning is going to be from half past nine to half past four, inshallah. The morning will be myself talking about finance in Islam, the importance of looking after money, and that you are only responsible for the money you have, okay, before Allah. Some of it is for you, but some of it for others that you are responsible for, near or far away. And the halal and the haram have to do with money. And then this, mashallah, auditor very good brother who will be talking about finance generally he will talk about bookkeeping he will talk about uh, accountancy in general he will talk about budgeting he will talk about how to do your tax returns and all those things and i think it is very important nowadays because we need to do the right thing yeah we live in a country whereby there are laws we should follow them and do the cheating is not of islam uh, and then also i promised long time ago to do a, a two-day introduction course 
to single people for marriage. I'm really adamant. يعني, a lot of things are done and I'm not happy. I have been asked many times to do this thing. Last year I did two courses, just a day course talking about marriage. But now I realized it is better to do two days and only for single people. If you are married, you are not invited. <laughs> Even if you, you are not invited. If you are married, then you can do another course for you. You can't learn after you get in. You can't. That's a different course. But this is to do some discussion about what marriage and how to choose a partner, the right and the wrongs of choosing and what is Islam allowing you. And then in the meantime, those who are single who are coming there, maybe Allah will allow them to find. Because I have been for the last seven years discussing this with a lot of organizations. And everybody is asking me, Sheikh, please help us in setting something. Some people are trying to follow like speed dating and marriage dinners and all those things and they're copying others. And I'm always saying no. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> now, but how could you get people together? I said, no, I'm not. So now, Allah has inspired me. It is better if through two days of education, which is allowed in Islam, we come together to study the subject and do workshops and we rotate people to study the subject, this debate, discussion. Through two days of working with somebody, you will get to know some trait of that person, some habits, whether the, there is something there. Because when you see somebody, okay, you can make a judgment. But when you work with them, then you can make a better judgment, inshallah. That is my way. And inshallah, if you can find that. We are going to do it, inshallah, in November, maybe the week after this uh, accountancy course. I'm just setting final things about it. It will be advertised as well. If we, people want to attend that, inshallah, you can register your name with all those volunteers who are here, Sakina, Sazan, Warsami, and the others, you see? And register your name. We need to encourage Muslims to do the good things. And one of the good things living in the West here is to find the right partner that whom you can live your life with. Unfortunately, 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 and I will repeat it many times, there are those who are going out of their way talking about marriage and doing it the wrong way. And misleading, and I'm, I can say this again again, misleading the girls. They are married today, they are thrown away tomorrow because Islam is allowing me, the man, to marry as many as I like and you, as long as you are my wife, you do what I say. And that's not true. That's not true. That's really wrong, really wrong. I'm not hard with the men, but unfortunately, many of the men are taking it the wrong way. Okay, even some of the Islamic spokesmen and women, they are speaking the wrong way about marriage. Marriage is a beautiful <coughs> establishment Allah has made for people to have, to live a good life. Ask me, I have been married for the last 30 years. Okay, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. It's the best thing I have ever done in my life. Wallah, it's the best. my son just got married and I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. You forgive me. <laughs> we have known one another for a long time. Well, I don't know why. I put your name, but I'm sorry. But we'll make it. I'm going to get it married, inshallah. Yeah. We'll make, I'll compensate you. Okay? So this is really, and really, really, really important. I will say it by all means, inshallah. To all of you, please, please, yani, think of marriage as a very serious institution. It's not a joke. And by the way, even if you were married and you lost your partner, you separated from your partner, this is life. Nothing wrong with that. However, you should not remain unmarried. In fact, in the Quran, when Allah spoke about engagement, it was revealed because some of the companions, they wanted to marry a woman, somebody else marry her, and then suddenly her husband died, she's in her idda. Okay, she's secluded until she completes the days of the idda, the four months and ten days to make sure that she's not pregnant, carrying the child of that person, then they're confused. It's all just to judge properly. Today they can make it uh, with scientific observations. However, in that time they couldn't do that. So, some of the companion wanted to ask that girl or woman to marry her. So Allah said, it's lawful, nothing wrong with that. As long as don't go direct, there are ways to do it. So engagement is halal in Islam. You can get engaged to a woman, but there are ways, there are etiquettes, there are rights and wrongs. They're a good thing. But to, to say suddenly to women, oh, well, the sunnah in Islam is to marry four, not one. Rubbish. I don't agree with that. The sunnah is to marry one woman. The sunnah is to marry one. Khadija is the only one wife to the Prophet. Khadija gave him children until she passed away. Did he ask any other woman to marry him? By the way, also in the right of marriage in Islam, the woman could have the right of the divorce. Many women don't know that. I do. I usually tell uh, when women, women come through me, I always tell them all the rights. And many of them, they don't know. And many of the men, they hide this. Just like you sign a contract of buying an equipment from those big, horrible companies, in italic, they write little writing underneath. 
if you don't retain this thing in the next three days, you are not going to be refunded. And silly you are thinking, well, I have 28 days. You go a week and say, no, sorry. But I still, only one week. Well, did you read? How do I know that? I see. So you find the condition of marriage written little in the marriage certificate. They're very important. A woman can decide anything in her marriage if she wants. And so, inshallah, we'll talk about all those things and do them in the right way. May Allah reward you. May Allah bless you. I'm sorry to delay you. And may you have a wonderful night and a good day tomorrow, inshallah.